All right, welcome to another edition of Old School. Today, my guests, one of the most legendary tag teams in the, the world of professional wrestling, 30 years now. You guys just uh, celebrated your 30th anniversary. Most marriages don't make it that long, but. Wrestling anniversary. Wrestling anniversary, right? <laughs> Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson, The Rock and Roll Express. Guys, thank you for uh, joining me here. And like I explained off camera, it's, it, you know, the, the whole concept of the old school series is uh, uh, just guys bullshitting along, having fun and stuff like that. And uh, I like to ask questions that, you know, your regular, you know, shoot interview don't ask and stuff like that because I grew up a fan of professional wrestling and uh, a lot of the guys that are in the old school series like i have like a, a certain connection with and uh and we'll go uh, we'll go through that and you got me you guys got me in trouble 20 26 years 27 years ago <laughs> then i'll go into that and some embarrassing stories i have uh that involve the rock and roll express that they don't even know about but um what a lot of people don't realize first off is that you guys are from wrestling families uh robert your your brother ricky wrestled and then uh ricky your, your father um, was a referee for uh, the Memphis Territory, correct? Yeah, Memphis. Well, you know, back then you had territories. You, you had Memphis, he refereed there. Eric Crockett's in the old days. Uh, you know, Eddie Graham down in Florida. Uh, Dick Goulis, uh, Jerry Dray yeah, But in the early 60s, you know, he was a professional wrestler too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, um, the, what got you guys influenced in professional wrestling? Was it something that like you were you were born into and that you you attach yourself to early, or was it something that came in, you know, a progress of time? You go ahead, right? Well, well, for me, I've been around, I've been around wrestling all my life. Like I said, my brother was six years ahead of me, and I grew up, you know, putting up the ring chairs, putting up the wrestling ring, sold wrestling tickets, sold cokes. So ever since I can remember, it's always been something to do with wrestling. And as I was training coming up, I knew I'd become a champion one day, and. So me and Ricky hooked up and became eight-time world champions. I was gonna say, but where, where did you grow up? Was it Pensacola? Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Florida. So you, you're you're in like the Gulf Coast area mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Where Ricky, you grew up in in Tennessee. Yeah, I grew up in go Tennessee with, with the coolest territory. To, yes, but I went to different territories with my dad too. Right. Now to understand, like Robert said, and like most guys <laughs> in business, business today, and I'm not trying to say that it's anything wrong, but what we do to, to get into this business, like Robert said, you know, my dad. He refereed, but mm -hmm. then he pulled the wrestling ring. Right. And then what we had to do, everything. Uh, started off as a kid, you know, we pulled the, my dad would pick me up after school. We'd go to the towns, we'd put the wrestling ring up, put the chairs out. We, I'd sell the programs. Uh, I never forget, I used to sell some of the, the guys' pictures back then, but back then they were eight by 10, black and white, and they sold for a quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, my daddy would get the tickets. My daddy would check up after that. See, we did all the process of this on up until I started in the wrestling business. I mean, I, I don't know if it's saying that I'd, I went through a lot more, Robert went through a lot more getting into this business, but at that time of days, that was how I grew into the situation. You, you guys were like more like an apprentice before you were, you oh, know. Buddy, right. yeah, we learned We learned a bit of inside and out. Back then, that's, that was the way you was taught. Now, with the Gulf Coast Territory, how did that work? Like, uh, you know, wa walk us through like uh, a week of that, and then we'll get into like the Ghoulist Territory, because I want to see like how they were different. You know, you guys both growing up in the wrestling business, but right. in different territories. How did how did the, the well, Southeast it, Territory work? Even though you're in different territories, in these territories, they still ran seven nights a week. Right. So you was in like, for, for example, like in Gulf Coast, you was in like Montgomery on a Monday night, Mobile on Tuesday. Wednesday we was off, Thursday was Panama City, Florida, Friday, Dalton, Alabama, Saturday, New Brockton, then you was back home. That's, that's what you did every week. Every week. And how, how was the... Well, was the same thing, but you I'd understand this, like I was telling you earlier, we went through territories. You mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, my daddy worked for the Field Brothers, too, at Pensacola. Okay. Matter of fact, we lived out there in uh, Loxley, Alabama. Uh, remember, remember it was Speedy Hatfield and all yeah. them. Uh, yeah, I remember. The Lee and Don Fields. See, we worked territories. I was there in that era too. Right. Uh, I remember Robert Michael Hayes used to put the ring up down at uh, at the TV station down in Pensacola. Yeah. Do you remember that? So you guys, well, you guys met early in life, huh? Well, well, well but we did were, you know each other then, or well, you know? Yeah, we knew. But see, understand me. I was with my daddy. He was right. With his brother. We was, we was young kids. Yeah. But see, when the matches was over, I had to go with my dad. Yeah. Oh, I knew Robert. Yes, I uh, I knew him. Right. Michael Hayes and all you know a lot of these guys, a lot of these boys. That's in this business. That's how they started out. Yeah. 
But then I went to the same thing to Nick, you know, when my dad worked for uh, Nick Gulas, yep. uh, you know, it was the same thing, just a different town ever, ever night. Right. And that's, uh, and until he went on, he left Nick and went to Jerry Jarrett to Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. Now, like, uh, growing up in that, you know, it's, it's, it's a tight knit, you know, family because, you know, at, at the time, you know, uh, wrestling business is an ex exposed as, you know, entertainment and stuff like that. You had that, that, the, the concept of K Fabe was so strong and stuff like that. You, you're almost, uh, dare I say, it, like a circus life because it's, you know, you're living that life 24 hours a day. Now, how long did it take, you know, until like your brother, or your dad smartened you up to <coughs> how wrestling worked? Or is it, was it like an evolution? Like, okay, I, I know something's going on here, you know. And, it, you know, is it something that kind of you learn by osmosis or is it finally something somebody says, all right, you know, this is how, but, you know, if you're going to get into this, this is how it's going to work. Well, you know, as, as being a kid, growing my dad, especially when I was like seven, eight, nine, ten years old, watching the matches, you know. Uh, that was mandatory. Uh, right. Well, okay, I was going to ask that. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't say that, but watching the matches, I wasn't smart to the business. Mm-hmm. And I remember my dad would be in these big matches like with the, the Von Brunners against Don and Al Green or or Tojo against Lynn Rossi. Yeah. I would run and hide. I, would, I couldn't watch a match because I thought my daddy was going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big rival But back then. And, uh, it, and at, that, at that age, my, you know, it was just not as me being a kid, not knowing, but the, like you said, the business is so kayfabe. Uh, even as a kid, when I went in the dressing room, you never seen the heels and baby faces together. Right. Uh, when they'd come out, I mean, I guess nowadays it, it, you would say it when they come out of character, but then they stayed in character all the time. Right. That was their gimmick, buddy. And it was our business was so sacred. You right. Know, uh, and it, in those days, and until I got older, and, and you know, then seen a little bit more and learned a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, it just naturally being there. Yeah. With common sense, I figured out how our business worked. Worked. Yes. So it was like no one, like, your dad didn't say, uh, you know, on a ride, like, all right, Rick, this is, you know. No. This is how it works. My how, mother. Uh, with your your brother, same way, Ron? Mm -hmm. Wow, that same must have been amazing. Now, let me tell you something, dude. My mother, my daddy, I, I buried my daddy a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. He was 98 years old. Him and my mother were married 76 years. Wow. Okay. Wow. Mom and Daddy never smartened my mother up. Never? No. They, no. Wow. You know, I, I mean, I, after you got in the business, she, <clears throat> when I got into it and was gone, blah, blah, she never asked. But, but it, my mother was the same way. Oh, you're going to get hurt. You're get hurt. <laughs> but I went through this process every day. You know? Wow. That's how sacred our business was. So once, once you guys start training and stuff like that, you know, uh, I would see the differences of like training, like Robert, when you, you break in, does your brother, is, is, how does your brother break you in? Well, back then we, we didn't have the pleasure to have a wrestling ring to wrestling right. all the time. He, he'd take me to the beach in the, gu in, in the guff and suplex me in the water. That's how I learned how to do suplexes. And we, how to bump and everything. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. We didn't call it bumping back in. Right. We, we just called just different moves. Uh, but uh, if you wanted to slam, you got slammed on the ground. Yeah. So. Real and, quick. And, and, well, my great thing is, you know, we had a wrestling ring. Right, that's what my dad pulled it. It was in our backyard, mm -hmm. but we never set it up there. What? But at the mat, see, and, and you, and I don't know if you know me, and I still, I still like my daddy. Yeah, I get to the wrestling shows early, mm -hmm. always do. You know, sometimes the shows don't even start to seven eight o'clock, and Ricky Morton's there at three thirty or four. But it, it's something that I grew up into. But pulling the ring up after me and my dad got the ring up. You know, it, it showed me a few things, but understand me, it's like Robert was fixing to say a while ago. His most important thing is, while I was there every night, watch every match, mm -hmm. watch what they do. You know, and and then when I did break into the business, and this, is, and it's hard to explain this, and I tried to do this to David Cash one time. I said, David, I, and my daddy told me this. He said, I can, I can teach you this. I can, you can learn this. But there's something about this business that nobody can teach you. You'll know when you have it. Mm -hmm. you, you understand me? It, it, you know, it's hard to explain.
Right. Especially, and you know what I'm talking about. Any wrestler knows what I'm talking about. Is when you get in that ring and that magic. It's that magic when you learn how to listen to the crowds. You learn how to get, and you and you start that process of telling a story in your match mm -hmm. right from the lockup. Yeah. See, that's the kind of something that everybody's lost these days. But I'm not saying that. And it's like David. You know, I my dad told me I can talk to you. Tell blue in the face. Yes, but I'm better off talking that walk because you're not going to understand <clears throat> right. what I'm saying to you. You have to experience it. Yeah. Right. It, it's, a, it's a definite learn but I'm telling uh, on David, the job, right? Yes, but I was telling David Cash this when I was training David. All right, yo, son of a bitch, you don't know. Man, 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 man. This went on forever, right? At about one, 3 o'clock in the morning one time, I'm in bed asleep. My phone rings, and I answer it. David Cash. Ricky. Damn, David, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It hit me. I got it. He said, Joe, son of a bitch, you was right. <laughs> I was wrong. He said, I thought I knew everything, and I didn't know shit. Yeah, that's a great compliment. Yeah, yeah. When he told me that. And, uh, he's got a hard head. Beg your pardon? Hey, he's got a hard head. Oh, yeah. Like these but things. then he finally got it. Well, it's all right. Everybody's uh, got their own personality. Uh, he's a hell of a worker, though. You're damn right. Oh, yes. man. You don't know. I don't know if you had the pleasure of meeting another young kid. I trained uh, Chase Owens. Yes, yeah. I met yes. him in Tennessee. Good kid. He, he definitely a good kid. You know, he was yeah. a big deal last night. He was in uh, out in Texas. In Houston. Yes, yeah. he was. And, you know, he he's a junior. Well, he he won the belt back last yeah. night in Houston. Big deal for him last yeah. night. He yeah, he's a good kid. He called me a hundred times. Yeah? Yeah, sure did. Wow. <laughs> now, uh, what year do you guys make your, your, your pro debut? You know, in... 77 for me. 77? Uh, buddy, I had my first match, and this is... Uh, never talked about this for many hours. I was working for the... Well, my daddy was working for the Field Brothers. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they were going to break. They had Ricky get uh, Ricky uh, Fields. Remember Ricky Fields? Just a kid. It was on some spot show somewhere back up in there, and somebody didn't show up, and there wasn't nobody there. And at the age 15... I stepped in the ring with him, and we had a good little match. Don't get me wrong. I was a kid. Mm -hmm. He was a kid, but they let us get by with this. Uh, at my age, getting senile, I lost track of the years. Like you said, Robert and I, this year, have been wrestling partners. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I don't judge. <laughs> I come here. Hood. <laughs> but... <laughs> Wrestling partners for 30 years. Yeah. But I've been wrestling for 38 years. Wow, 38 years. You know, and that's, you know, that's like before we come to the Rock and Roll Express, people don't even know. Oh, I got uh, I got it. You know, you first broke the business, Rick and you guys are these great workers that that really respected our business to the town. You know, I, I, I remember the first time he asked me how to go over, you know, I was going to go over to the match. I didn't know how. We want me to go. I don't. I don't win. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, yeah. Because you're still, you're still learning. Robert, do you remember? Do you remember your first match? Like, yeah, I sure do. It was against Eddie Sullivan. It was in New Brockton, Alabama. Yeah. Second match was against the Samoans. Wow. So, it was, yeah, that's, cool. that's the thing. Like, so you guys learned from the underneath up. Right. You know, like putting up the rings. You know, making town to town. Yeah, now you start plus, off in, in, as plus, you know yeah, opening plus, match. Yeah, guys. plus we, we was able to work with guys that were already on top. Yeah, that knew what they were doing. Well, uh, you don't know even about that, Robert. And, I, and I, I make a comment this a lot. And what people don't really understand, you know, you work with people that were on top. Now, you know, now I say that whatever. Later on in the years, my very first match was with Tojo Yalabolo. Okay. A variant. No, was that Goulas or, or Jarrett? Or, or was for it Goulas. out of Ari? It was for Goulas when I, at a variant, to, to know Tojo at that time, mm -hmm. you know, he couldn't have been, what, five foot three? Right. But he was so intimidating and everything. But I went out to have a match with him. But what I'm going back to is to say, in those days, even your super job boys that were on TV, some of the greatest workers in this business. Right. You had to have that ability to even get in that ring in those days. You understand me? But uh, going back to Tojo, I mean, my first match was him, buddy. I mean, I'm in the ring, you know, I'm going yeah. crazy, but <clears throat> smooth. Yeah. And I listened, 
especially if you got some of these guys, these guys that would give you a little chance. Yeah. They get in the ring, give you a little, and whatever you did, if they call a spot, don't mess it up. Because they would let they would peach your, I mean they didn't. That would be the last spot you got. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, that's all. And then did it get around quick? Like ah, oh, he fucks up a lot, or no, no, no. Are they just you learn just next time that. you didn't fuck up? Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Especially working with Gypsy Joe, you fuck up with him, buddy. You know, yeah. Yeah. And his pride, but he'll slap you across the back, man. Lightning shoot out your ass. You know, I mean, you did, you damn sure didn't want that no more. Yeah, you guys work. Uh, your your first territory is going to be Goulas. Your first territory is going to be uh, Gulf Coast. Uh, Gulf Coast. Now, uh, walk me through like uh, a normal week when you first start off with. You know, you, you're on the now you're on the road. Are you still putting up the ring? Are you still part of the you know paying your dues, putting up the rings and everything? Or are you solely wrestling? Uh, when, I, when I finally started wrestling, I was solely just just wrestling. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Now now. Uh, Working on the bottom, you know, you're, you're you're working your way up. What's what's the pay scale like for you know that time? Yeah, you were talking 1977. My God, son, I work for Nick Goulas. Right, I, well, what that's are you talking about? That, yeah, I'd see. I never, I never got the the pleasure to meet him, but like I had always heard that you know he he had the reputation for the worst payoff go, guy. And after a while, we go on into this. I mean, buddy, literally, I mean, you had to understand that. Back then, you rode six or seven in a car, <laughs> okay, yeah. to help split the gas money. And, you know, it charged transcend, and, and you had to. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought in my lifetime that every person in this world that's in this business would have been, you know, you, you have your wrestling schools, you have your training courses now that you got to go through. What an experience it would have been. All right, we... we all right, guys, we got you here at this wrestling school. We're going to send you out. Send them to work for Nick Goulas for two months and see if that really don't smarten him up about what our business is about. Right, learning, you so know. Buddy. There'd be a lot of guys hanging the boots up. Well, oh, yeah, because yeah. yeah, people don't realize is that, you know, they think wrestling, you know, are what they see on TV, but they don't realize that, you know, you're getting your payoff at the, you know, especially when you first start off and you're you're underneath, you're not the main event guy. You know, you're, you're hoping... To make enough for your, your food, your gas, or your well, hotel driving, you, you know. If you, if you didn't ride with somebody and you didn't, and, and, you see, and, and understand back then, it, you, you didn't stop at McDonald's. You didn't stop at Applebee's to eat. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean I'm mean, i serious. People don't even realize this. You, know, you packed a lunch like you was going to work. <clears throat> you was lucky they stopped for these restaurants. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, but I'm serious. You know that, right? You packed, you, you yeah. bring a sandwich with you yeah. or something. I still do it just to save money, you know? Well, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, back then, you was taught to go work and come home. Yeah. And, and, and it's not something like you dwelled on either, right? You just knew that that's, yay. That was it. You know, I have a goal to make money, in, you know, and I got to start here and, and, and do that. Yes. And, you know, in, in the business uh, those days, and made it, you see, now, you guys, you have these contracts, and, 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 and I'm so glad for them. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, these guys, bless their hearts, you know. I mean, I see, we depended on each other for a living. You know, we didn't get paid by contracts. You got, you know, especially as you got on and working on, like in the Bill Watts territories, you know, you, you got paid by how many asses were in seats. Mm -hmm. So you depended on each other. But even back in the Nick Goulas days, you know, like Nick only paid like Ben Rossi and Toad, you know, his top boys. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys underneath starved to death. Right. And then as I grew older in this business, these guys that we starved to death with, you know, it's, We've progressed in this business together, right. and we depended on each other. You know, me and Bobby Eaton were there. Uh, oh, see, uh, Wayne Ferris. Oh, maybe uh, how many guys? Well, I mean, everybody you could ever think of. Now, you, in these days, we come through that process, and as we got older in the business, you know, that's what you know. We was talking one ago, Steve, about the boys. Yeah, it's not many of us left, son. Right, the true, real boys. From the that, territory. That understand yeah. that, that what we do, it has been through that together. And uh, that, you know, it's no matter what, it's dependent on each other. Right. To, to make a living. Now, do you guys believe that, you know, the, the, the dues you paid, being hungry, that, you know, the, you know, working um, underneath, you know, until you earn that, that spot made you appreciate when you were on top more? Or was it, you know, because... 
you, you see some guys, and I'm sure you've seen them come and go, guys that come in and somehow they're on top right away. And then you realize like, they don't have an appreciation for, you know, the business of, you know, professional wrestling that, you know, they leave it and then they're bitter and everything like that. But here you guys are, you know, 38 years later, you know, you still got a smile on your face. You walk into an independent locker room where you guys have wrestled in stadiums. You'll come into a locker room that has 150, 200 people. You're still happy. Yeah. You know, you're going out there and, um, you know, so, and we'll get into this a little bit later. But some of my favorite matches are Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express matches. Yeah. You'll still go in there and two Good young guys food. and stuff like that and you'll give them 20 25 rock and roll express minutes that where these people are you know up and down and you know it's it do you believe it's like a lost art yeah totally lost and and, and related to what you just said and i appreciate you bringing this up you know i know i'm older man but my love for this it's not even that my love for this business but the love for what i do mm -hmm. See, Robert and I are, are in the independent circuit. Our face is out there a lot. You know, like some of the guys that have made big money, they, you know, they maybe see them once every two months mm -hmm. of what to do. But see, one thing that keeps Robert and I going is that when we do work these independent shows, when those people pay to see us, even though I'm 57 years old, I don't care, but I'm in better shape. Physically, I am mm -hmm. than when I was a kid because I changed my whole life. Yeah, not to the point that I'm talking about my body. Right, right. We still give the people the money's worth. Yeah, if they pay to see us, we give it to them, and, it, and it's a great thing. But you, but you, and you th think back to what we did in, in, in the trails. A lot of them, you know, I, I've seen guys before. And I don't want to mention names. I could, but yeah, I mean, what? What the hell? They come in. It's God damn business, I bad, da da da. I said, oh, yeah, but you and I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> yeah, but you're a fucking millionaire. What are you I'm fucking not. bitching about? Yeah, exactly. I mean, what about this goddamn business? Yeah. Why don't you? Okay, if you didn't have this goddamn business, what would you have right now? So that's what makes my ass want to dip snuff. Shit like that it pisses me off. <laughs> okay. No, I I agree with you, and yeah. I like. And uh, this is gonna sound ass kissing a little bit, but you know, me, I had you know, a cup of coffee on national TV for a year and three months, you know, and I've never been back, you know, and yeah. that's 15 years now. And, and you know, I, I get booked every weekend independent, I make, you know, okay money and stuff like that. But I always think back to, you know, when I started first watching independent wrestling, you know, I followed you guys. You know, Ricky from Southwest, you know, but magazines, you know, and then NWA and Philadelphia Six Center every month and stuff like that. Then even like when I go to an independent show that you guys were on, you guys would literally work your asses off in front of as many people that were there. Like, and I always remembered that going in when you'd see some, you know, a named guy go, oh, there's 100 people out there. Let's take it easy tonight, right? I'd be like, oh, man, I saw, you know. Uh, you know, the Rock and Roll Express in front of 100 people still put on a 25-minute match. Like, and I always thought, like, you know, if I was a kid, you know, going up, growing up, and uh, just, you know, a young wrestler, I remember the guys that would take the opportunity to be like, well, there's 100 ki uh, people out there, but you're going to learn for 25 minutes, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always appreciated that because now <clears throat> it influences me, you know. Yeah, I go in, kids like, oh, I know there's not a lot of people out there, so you probably don't want to do much. No, man, let's go out and tear the house down because those people came out, and right. it's stuff that I learned from you guys. Well, that, that's great, <laughs> and, I, and I like that on the independent circuit. It's because when you're on, in, you know, every, every night's a blind date. Yep. And then when you get these guys in the ring, and they, and what, what a lot of people don't understand, too, you know, these guys on, on the independent circuit, that when they have their shows, See, to them, that's their WrestleMania. Yes. It don't matter if it's 20 or if it's 500 or 1,000. Yeah. It's their WrestleMania. And you, and I get, a, Robert and I get this a lot when they come to, and I, I tell them, you know, they want to, what can we, I, buddy, let's do me a favor. Just this one time tonight. And it, if you think it's a great opportunity to work, Robert, just listen to us. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's good to, to make these kids understand. And, and after all the matches, and it's a great compliment when they come back and tell you, well, I didn't know you could do it like that. Well, see, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not what you do. It's how you do it. Yeah. 
uh, you can, you know, enjoy. But, you know, Robert and I, we still enjoy what we do. I mean, when it, and you it's can see be it in the, the ring, too. It's, you know, it, it's, it's not you, you guys time. aren't going through the motions. You it's going to come the time that we got to quit. <laughs> yeah. But right now, I feel good. I still get the people their money's worth. And you're still making towns. You're, you're, Dude, you're the hardest still, working guy. <laughs> yeah. We still make Seven days a week. We still make a living. Yes, yeah. I work a lot, buddy. I do. Yeah. Now, uh, your first territory is how long do you last before you... Now, do you decide to move on? Or is it somebody that says, hey, look, why don't you go here because you're going to well, learn well, more? Back in the day, you, know, you, you go to a territory and you can, you can travel all over the world. You go you know, six months here, six months here. You know, by the time you got back to, let's say, back to the Gulf Coast, you've been gone over a year, so you're fresh again. Yeah. So uh, back then, it was about every six months. Where, where did you go? Where did you go to, uh, next after Gulf Coast? When I you went first to uh, Kansas City. Okay. I was out there with my brother. He, he was wrestling Harley Race at the time. He was going for the world title. They were doing 60-minute, 90-minute Broadways every wow. night. Wow. Now, how was the, how did you uh, find the Kansas City territory different than Gulf Coast? Caught her in a well digger's ass. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take the words out of my mouth. Yeah. <clears throat> Put no ocean there. Yeah. Uh, different guys, different different styles. Uh, Kansas City was good, but I, I I basically got my break after Kansas City and uh, Memphis, Tennessee. With Jerry Memphis. Jarrett. Okay. Now, what what year is that around? Uh, when you first get that that break in Memphis? That was probably seventy eight. Seventy eight. Yeah. Now, after Goulas, where do, where do you go, Ricky? Well, you know. I was in a process where I, was, I lived in Nashville. Mm -hmm. You see, and that and I, I stayed for Dick for a while. My daddy was already in Memphis. Right. Now it's different between us. You know, they're in the same state. You know, and, and Jerry and Nick worked together, but you know, Nick was like here. Yeah. And it was like to me, I, I, I stayed for Nick until I thought I learned enough. And a matter of fact, it's, this is what I, I was working for Nick, and I was off on a Wednesday. And my, my dad was in a, it's another thing, it's just how I got my job there. See, it's like going to the, going to the show. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going, and guys, a lot of people don't even understand that Memphis, Tennessee, that, that area, Jerry Lawler mm -hmm. and Bill Dundee and everything. But at that time, that was the hottest territory in the whole country. Yeah. Nobody even understands unless you were there to know what I was talking about. Uh, but I was working with my dad Evansville and somebody didn't show up. And I was at the right time at the right place. Uh, my daddy told us, won't you let Ricky work? And, and, and I ain't even got to say this, Jerry Jerry goes, well, uh, all right, y'all go out in the first match. And it's the right place at the right time. And I went out and I performed and I come back. Jerry Jerry told me, he says, uh, I know you're supposed to give a two week notice. He said, but fuck Nick. He says, I, I need you to start on Memphis TV Saturday morning. Wow. You have a job. Now what year is this? It's had to be what, 79, 79. or 80, I guess, wasn't it, Robert? Somewhere around in there. Now, so you guys are almost around, you guys are in Memphis together at this time? <clears throat> Late 70s or? Yeah. Or do you guys miss I, each other I, I a little bit? I was my brother, but Ricky was still there. Right. Now, yeah. the, the first time I see Ricky uh, on television, I, I grew up in the Philadelphia area, mm -hmm. so cable TV starts hitting, and uh, USA had Southwest Championship Wrestling on. And uh, so you're, we're talking San Antonio, uh, you know, 82, would you say? Uh, uh, the Late yeah. 81? Well, that's 81. That yeah. was 81, because I, you, I, don't, I don't work to Memphis for a year, mm -hmm. I know, or a year and a half. And then you, you well, go I've been to Oklahoma before that too for Leroy McCartney. Wow, okay. Yeah, you go to Oklahoma and then, then San Antonio. Yeah. Where, where did you, how long did you stay in Memphis that first time? Uh, I was there about a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Teaming with your brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go, you go to San Antonio and then now it's USA Network. Now, do you guys realize that you're on national TV? It's, it's time, to, like, because well, it's still what, in its it, infancy. It's not, it's it really not being educated. Uh, to what you know, TV was about. Mm -hmm. You know, like the satellite and all this stuff here. Uh, not really until until the superstation. Yeah, to a later on. Yeah, but no. But I said I was there with a guy named Ken Lucas. Yes. Yeah. You and, guys. And you got to understand, uh, like another process. It was another stage of my learning career. Mm -hmm. 
you know, Ken Lucas, man, he taught me how to be a baby. Fan. And he was he was like the older veteran, right? And you were yes, the younger sir. guy of the team, right? And in his day, buddy, he was he was the man in like these smaller territories mm-hmm. that you went to. Uh, but you didn't realize because you focused on you did your Monday night TV there in San Antonio, you know, f- for the bicycle tapes to go all over Texas. But you never even because we were still there, and you didn't think about it till when it hit that USA Network. Yeah, it's and it going went everywhere. around the world. To I started getting phone calls from different promoters about what I, later on in my life. You'd like to come in later on and stuff, and, it, it, and I'm going, wow, they know that much about me yeah. for being down here. But it was off that. I'll, I'll never forget. Yes. It, it's got to be early '82. And I don't know if this was the way to get you out of the territory or this was a legit injury and this is where the, 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 the fan in me will come out. I'll remember, I remember a match where you guys dropped the Southwest Tag Team titles to the Grapplers. Um, and it's on a, you guys are going, going, going. And it's a headlock, drop down, you trip over the Grappler when he drops down, yeah. blow out your knee, leads into the finish. Yes. And I thought, and then you were gone. You you went and, you, and I thought, oh my God! When I started wrestling school and we did drop downs, I was like, I'm jumping over because I remember like, <laughs> oh my God, Ricky Morton blew out his knee and I never oh, saw him again. A, that's a great yeah thing, man. Now was that was that the way to get you? Was that your finish for the territory or were? All right, I'll ask well, you know, legit injury. I'm sitting here thinking, but I used to watch him because you, I never saw you wear trunks again. Because that was when uh, you got, you got to understand this. It's uh. I don't know the situation that happened in Memphis between uh, Lawler and Jarrett, that, but they had the fabulous ones there. Yes. And uh, when I was in San Antonio and Jerry Lawler was booked, I think he was working with Nick Blockwinkle that night in San Antonio. Oh, wow, okay, yeah. And, uh, you know, they was affiliated with yep. AWA. I remember I was sitting in the dra- I walked in with Ken Lucas, and, and I remember Jerry Lawler called me over to the side you know, Memphis was my home. Mm-hmm. You know, my daddy and blah, blah, blah. And he said, Ricky, this thing going on. And, you know, we got the fabulous ones in Memphis, but we might go in another little direction because I might pull away from Jared. And I want to bring you and Robert in as a, as a tag team. Well, understand me, I'm in San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. <clears throat> I was in Florida. You? And you're, in, you're in, now you're in Florida. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, are you Pensacola or are you Florida Championship Wrestling? Uh, or Gulf Coast. Gulf Coast, okay. Mm-hmm. But uh, and Lola tells me, he says, uh, it's time for you to come home. And, and understand me, I love San Antonio, yeah. Texas. I loved working there and I, all the process of learning things. But It was amazing. You know, I had my wife, too. my first wife, and my youngest son was there, uh, Jonathan. You know, I miss my mother and my dad. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go home. So we, you know, I gave my notice. And Lord and behold, I... Packed up, met Robert in Memphis TV. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, does Lawler approach you in, in Gulf Coast about uh, about this idea to put yes. you guys together? Yes, makes the same way he did Ricky. Wow. And now, have you ever? Did you ever think of asking him like, why us? What was it? What was the, you know, what what was the mindset of Jerry Lawler thinking? You know what? I got Robert Gibson in in, in the Gulf Coast. I got Ricky Morton in San Antonio. The fabulous ones are are over. But I might split from Jarrett, and I'm going to need somebody to... Well, you understand, we were two young kids that grew up there, and we're still young. Yeah. He needed two young baby faces. And I guess if you put it all on paper, what was his best option? To bring in two people that the fans know, that knew they started here and worked their way up, or to bring in two totally different guys that you really don't know what they can do. Right. Once you put them together. You so know. it was it was basically the two homegrown guys that you know grew yeah, up in the, in the wrestling yeah. business that you know, uh-huh. wow. So um, to, so you guys, what what is the first time that you guys get together as the as the Rock and Roll Express? Now, Lawler come up with the, the name too, or did you guys well, come up it, with the name? It went through a long process, and uh, Robert, you need to shut up. You talk <laughs> right, <laughs> but it, it went through a long process because it's, you know Jimmy Hart had a little something to do with it and everything. You know it's. Ricky, Robert, okay, uh, uh, R&R, Express, and and then, it, you know, and here comes Jimmy Hart in. And it, how about the Rock and Roll Express? Right. You know, and it, 
and it clicked. And it, it, a great time. MTV's just starting to make that climb up. And yes. Um, what, how do you guys like design the? You know the. the All right, Robert, you tell this. I was gonna say the outfits because. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, the outfits are, are, and I'll show you in a little bit, the outfits become a very uh, influential thing on me too. But, you know, you guys dress different than anybody did at the time too. You know, because I'd seen Robert Ricky in, in magazines, you know, uh, and then I'd seen Ricky on, on USA Network in trunks and stuff like that. Now all of a sudden, you guys are rock and rolled out with the bandana. It's like, how does that, how does that come about? Well, the first, the first time we got together, this yeah. is great. <laughs> The first night we got together was in Memphis Coliseum, <coughs> right outside of Memphis. They had like a flea market going on. Yeah, remember it was Sunday afternoon show, yeah. and right. they had the flea market. So me, Ricky, mm -hmm. and Jerry Lawler went walking to the flea market. Yeah, to sure see did. what we could do to make something look like we, rock and roll. Yeah, we felt bandanas, feathers, feathers. Yeah, I remember the feathers. Yeah, everything. But you know what I like? Lawler brought us. And, it, and this is great because you had tights. to be there to understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> he brought two sets of tights in there, and one of them, I mean, I had the pur I seen them, and I grabbed them purple ones first. And the other ones were like skin color. You know, because me and Robert and I hadn't been, but I'm going to tell you here in a minute how we got our first outfit. But, uh, you know, it was skin colored. Yeah. I had to rig together than me. So it was yeah. like a see-through, or no? Like, it was just like just color your skin. Color skin, yeah. You know, and we wasn't used to wearing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, and when you wear short tights yeah. and knee pads for a long time, it's like putting on long tights. It's something don't feel right. Yeah. It's yeah, like right now. Out. I've been wearing the long tights for so long. If I went back to short tights, I, I wouldn't like it. Yeah. You understand? Because I, I mean, it is. But to give Robert the skin color things and here and they brought us and you know he looked like he was naked you know you understand what i'm saying when yeah. he did bandanas around and my brother i never forget my brother watched this on tv he goes he was screaming robert's naked in the ring <laughs> but we did this and we put all this stuff on us guys and Remember what the guy told us when we come back from the dressing room? Yeah, he, he said, I know his brother call y'all Indians or rock and rollers. No, gypsies. <laughs> gypsies gypsies yes. and rock and rollers. Yes. Wow, so uh, your first guys tag team, first tag team match together is Mid-South Coliseum. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, how, how did they introduce you? Like, you, you guys right away started to get, you know, well, you know the initial... Before we came in to uh, Memphis, you know, I was coming in from San Antonio, you know, and back then they did good jobs. You know, what our business is all based up is advertisement. Yep. You know that. Yeah. Well, you got to understand, you got Memphis TV is a, was a two hour show? It was an hour. It was an hour and a half? No, it was two hour, hour and a half, two I hours. Thought, I thought the live show was an hour and a half, but yeah. like Sunday was an hour, right? Yeah, but we did it live. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they advertise us for like two weeks. We get the new tag coming. The Rock and Roll Express. Music videos and stuff like that? No, because the people didn't know it was me and Robert. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. And when they, we popped and they come out that door, you know, chemistry in this business is so much. And, uh, and sitting, you know, Robert and I had that chemistry together. Yeah. It is something that, you know, really, uh, it, 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 was, it was fate, fate, I guess. Yeah. Because... Us working together in the ring, it, it automatically clicked. I was you say, was it something you know, you guys, you know, guys, you had teamed with your brother and you were you were tag team with Ken Lucas. It was something yes. like, okay, I'm gonna take what I got, what you got, and let's you know, let's gel it together. Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't nothing that Robert and I sat down and thought about and went through. Right. You know, it's something that just the More chemistry just, yeah, it just hit. And the people say, you know, and when you do something to ring that, that you know that fits, the people know it too. Yeah. And, and, and when that chemistry mixed together, it, I'm, I'm telling you, brother, our whole world changed uh, that that afternoon in Memphis, Tennessee. Wow. So uh, who do you, do you guys remember who you wrestled that first time in Memphis? I remember it's Pago Pago and, uh, <laughs> and uh, somebody else. Who, remember Pago Pago? Yeah, I remember, I remember him. A I'm great gonna... guy. He worked with us. You know, he was a, a Samoan guy, I think. Okay. Right? You know, and uh, but we knew them all, and they and they were happy for us, guys. We had a little break. Yeah. And they put us over like a million dollars. Oh, nice. Now, 
the, the fab's still there at the time. Yes. Now, how is that? You know, because you guys get over with the the with the oh my goodness, with the girls screaming yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Where the fabulous ones were, you know, they came in with their cool beards and everything. And well, you know, uh, plus they follow the road of Jackie Fargo. You know, Jackie Fargo. Yeah. You know, the fabulous Jackie Fargo. Uh, buddy, I, I mean, I you just got to say we got put in a situation there that even though. Uh, and I'm not going to say nothing bad. And we don't. The thing didn't work out. I mean, Jarrett and Lawler worked their thing. Yeah. Which is great. Memphis is good. To, when you ran to, a lot of times you ran to some of your major towns. Right. And you ran two towns a night, you know, uh, like on Thursday or Friday or Saturday, Robert and I were in different towns from them. But, you know, we got our little thing, but we still played second fiddle. Right. Now, was there any animosity with them at all? Like, you know, oh, uh, you no. guys are young guys getting your, your break and stuff like that. But these guys were like the established tag team in Memphis. Did, were, did they feel, do you think they feel threat, felt threatened at all? Or? I don't know if they did or we didn't. No, right, because yeah, you no, guys were we didn't. happy, we was, right? But we was happy and, uh, and understand. No, I don't think so. I mean, uh, you see, I come up in this business the hard way. Yeah. And... After Jared, anyway, Robert and I knew our position. Okay, good. We already asked to do. Right. Uh, they're not going to, you know, the fabulous ones with their teeth. Yeah. And that's the one that's going to push. But see, with them selling out, it, it made us a lot of money, too. Yeah. But Robert and I did good, too, on our shows. You know, we went, we, we, we cared a little low, too. Yeah. You understand me? Now, is, is this where you guys meet? Um, Bob, uh, Bobby and Dennis for the first time as the Midnight Express? But or, do, it, or do we go into... Alive. Right, you, you grew up basically with Bobby, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and well, Dennis, is is he a Gulf Coast guy? No, he, he was in Mid-South. He was Mid-South? No, he's from, you know, I mean, he was down in there, but, you know, you, he's asking if, if he is... Like, Florida did guy. you know Dennis, like, for when you were... Yeah, when you, you know, first... he's from Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. And Bobby Eaton is, too. Yeah. All them up around from the same area. So, um... Is, that, is this where you guys saw the, the first Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express matches happen in Memphis, or is it Louisiana? No, no, it was uh, Louisiana. Louisiana, okay. When it came to Bobby. You know, we, see, but the Midnight Express was, was around long before Cornette and Bobby Dennis. It was Randy uh, Rose Randy over Rose, Austin. Yep. Then it was Randy Rose, Rose over Austin, then Dennis. Yeah. You know, that was, you know, the way before... The cornet, Bobby Eaton, and Dennis. Right. Now, how, how long do you guys la uh, last in, in, in Memphis before going? If you, now, do you go Memphis to Louisiana, basically, Ooh, yeah. or do you, do you leave Memphis and travel around a little bit? No, 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 no. Like then you weren't territory. Right. Uh, we go through the same process. I don't, I don't know if you even understand, and it, it really sticks out in my mind because that's when Eddie Graham was alive. That's when Vince first started tra trying to take over the whole world. Mm-hmm. And at that day and time, buddy, that was, uh, you know, really done broke the golden rule. <laughs> you know, I'm saying here, these promoters are turning bipolar. They're flipping out. They're, they got to do something to get back at him. So they brought it. All the territories to do this. Had a of champions. Had a night yeah. of champions in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, they brought in all the promoters, Eddie Graham, Bill Watts, Bob Geigo, uh, you know, all of them. Yeah. From you know around the the world, and they and they're having this, and they had you know like the the try to make this big show to present to try to you know understand fight bits yeah, and it was great because uh, Bill Watts was there and uh, Eddie Graham and all of them, and I never forget. And, and what a great compliment! And I don't want to say nothing bad or, or put anybody down. You know, Robert and I, we was one of the underneath guys, right. tag team because they're trying to push these guys. And I forgot who we worked with. And we came back, and you had you had Jerry Jarrett, Bill Watts, Bob Geigel, you know, Vern Gagne. Eddie Graham. Right. All of them, right. but so Eddie you're, Graham. You're the, yeah, the, the Godfathers. Of yes, the, all the promoters. And, and, and Robert and I walked in the room, and Eddie Graham. He looked around at the promoters. He said, guys, I've been watching the shows tonight. And I watched the guys that y'all are pushing and the guys who do it. 
I didn't even know Eddie Graham. First time we ever met him. Me and Robert walked to the door. He says, I ain't trying to be nothing. I don't know everything. I don't know what we're doing. He said, but those two guys right there are coming to get over. Wow, nice. He said, them two boys right there, I, I just watched. That's what we need to go with. Yeah. Okay, and then I, me and Robert like. Uh, yeah, what a compliment, right? Well, yeah, but they, with that we're going, oh, God, they'll be bearing us. <laughs> we tried to get out of the room. And then. That was right before he died. It was. Yeah. But see, and Bill Watts, his territory, its bottom has fell out. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got his territory. He's not drawing nothing. And he come to Memphis, and he's trying to uh, see what he can get to get, you get know, his territory. do something right, to change it together. Because Che Whitey had left him, right? And that was his that was his big baby face. Yes. He, yeah. Well, and but he came back. Yeah. But. I'm just, hey, they're looking for something new. Yeah. And you understand me? And, uh, and i got to say this. Uh, you know, people can say, oh, the, I don't want to do this Memphis wrestling. You ever heard that before? Yeah, yeah. But Memphis wrestling was the great one. <laughs> yeah. Well, they took you know Bill Dundee, heard. Bill Watts hired Bill Dundee yeah. to be his booker in uh, Louisiana. And he took, you know, and I learned a lot in this business from Bill Dundee, too. I uh, absolutely adore and love him. Lossy. But he's, Bill's different, but he's smart. Mm -hmm. But see, because you got to understand, he was a small baby face. Yeah, yeah. And at that time, buddy, let me tell you, I, Robert's bigger than I am. I was the smallest baby face, especially to go into th that area. Of, yeah. Those are but, big tough guys in Mid-South, you know, that was always the, well, the tough guy yeah, territory, two, right? They were 250 pounds and bigger. Yeah. Yes, all of them were, and, but he wanted to try something different, and Bill Dundee, and Bill Watts come to us, too, he says, I, I never used. We well, wanted to use this on a trial run. He said, you want to do a trial run with you. We're going to, I worked a deal with Jarrett, if you'd like to come to Louisiana. He said, I never knew smaller guys in my business before. Always big guys, and we're just gonna try something. But, but the Midnight Express has already went in, mm -hmm. and they got them over. And see, it's just like planning out in a territory. It's what you got to understand what we're gonna do to make this really pop. Yeah. Well, the Midnight Express is in there, and they, you know, they were wrestling Magnum TA and you know wrestling Johnny Super, Walker. Yeah. Uh, and they're, you know, they're going through them. They're beating. Them. Well, you know, we made a bunch of videos and stuff in Memphis, and they sent them into Louisiana, showing them right there, and it was getting us over, and see, it was, it was like the fabulous, it was something they'd ever seen. Yeah. This area, I'd never seen nothing like this. Because Stephen Stan didn't go to Louisiana, right? No, yeah, no, so this we is, left, they still did, in Memphis. Did you guys see this right away? It's like, okay, this is our opportunity to well, well, Lord, break yes. out. But yeah, this is, you know, if we're gonna do it, this is what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. And you know, but it's like moving forward in any business, taking risk. Yeah. You know, investing in here, but investing ourselves into Louisiana. Now they didn't got the Midnight Express over. They're the champions. Yeah. But see, it was cool. We first come in, buddy, on the TV, and and I I love these guys for this because this is what makes you understand what our business is business. We were the All-American kids mm -hmm. who they put us with. Nikolai Vokov and Barry Dorsal. Yeah, the Crusher Crusher Crusher. they put you right against the Russians. Listen. Which is funny because years later you get the same. Uh, great. Well, buddy, we followed in path. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now, we did a little angle with them. And bless Nikolai Vokov's heart and Barry Dorsal. But they got us over. Uh, you, you thought with Muhammad Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard right mm -hmm. there in that ring, buddy. They got us over. Yeah. I mean, over. Then you, and at the same time, here's Jimmy Cornell. We were running his mouth, buddy. And you talk about having heat. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, yeah. They had heat. Dude, and it went on. It's, you know, and this process took about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, Jimmy Cornett, Talking about the Rock and Roll Express. Now you have to express against the Express. Yeah. And do when we shot that angle. Magic. Dude, I mean, it's, it, if you read Bill Watts' book, he'll it, tell you that 
he made more money in, the, in that time that we was there than he made in the last 10 years right. in his territory. He broke all of his records. Yes. Yeah, and it, it became like you guys were top guys as, as a tag team as opposed to like, you know, he had years of JYD right. and DiBiase and... Yeah, we and don't understand, but they were still, but, you know, I saw Jim Dunn. Yeah, oh, they see, were still drawing, but... But understand me, it, it, in a territory, dude, I mean, it takes everybody. Yeah. You know, it, it takes underneath guys to get you over. That's their job. Mm -hmm. They understand it. I went through that process. Robert went through that process to build up to where we at. Yeah. And dude, it just it just clicked. You know, and, and it got over, man. And now, the first time you guys wrestle Bobby and Dennis, do, do you do you realize it's magic? Like I could tell. We we could tell already, buddy. When we, yeah. When we shot the angle with them, Jim's the antagonist. See, because you had to have bicycle tapes. Yeah. And oh, that's right. the thing that like people don't realize. They think one tape, you know, is on USA Network. You yeah. watch it once a week. Now in the territory, you would literally take the same tape, and it would go yeah, like literally bicycle. station to station. Yeah, yeah. You're ready to go around the bicycle. Yeah, you know, to, So you're playing off you're, angle. You know, you know, you have this match this week in this town, but next week you're gonna have that match next week in that town. Yeah. You can yeah. be a week at. Yeah, that's what it is. That's that's you know sometimes amazing. Uh, I didn't realize that until the first time I went to Puerto Rico. You'd have the San you Juan tape. Coffee. Oh so yeah, you, you don't mind? I don't mind at all. Okay. Okay, thank you, buddy. I mean, I just just give me a coffee. There's thank cream you. and sugar over there too. It is black. Bring it to me, son. The the first time uh, I worked Puerto Rico, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, okay, it's a small island, but the San Juan tape goes everywhere. You know, WAPA's mm -hmm. got to go everywhere. I didn't realize like the um, western side of the uh, Thank you, buddy. island got the tape a week later. So you would shoot your angles, oh, yes. you would run your shows there, then the next week you were doing the same matches that you wow. did the last week, you know? And it was like, it was a whole new thing because you had to be smart to, you know, it was my first opportunity of going to the same towns every week. And you really, you know, wrestling's physical and stuff like that and people see what we do in the ring, but they don't realize the mental aspect of creating a new, piece of art every week because you know okay i did this this week okay i'm coming back with the same team okay what are we going to do different to make them come back again and like you were saying before about you know you were getting paid by asses in the seat yes. so not only you're putting you know you got 12 other guys on the show putting together the same mindset what can we do to bring these guys back next week and bring a friend you know what really amazed me is back you talk about the, the, the times like memphis tennessee every monday night you had 12 15 000 people you know 52 weeks out of a year yeah that's what yeah i'm glad you brought that's that because i was talking about that yeah, that's earlier. unheard of yeah so you had memphis tv on monday yeah we well, see you did you did your tv tape at saturday live and, and see when you did it live that was for memphis that monday night right okay but the next night you're in louisville but that's for the TV we did the week before. Now, when when you guys were there, when I, when I was in Memphis, it was almost dead. But when you guys, you would do Memphis TV on Saturday. Would you do Nashville sa Saturday night? <clears throat> Nashville or New Brunton. Okay, and that would be on the tape from Jonesboro. the last week, right? Nashville. Yeah, I mean, New Brunton. Yeah. Would that be from the TV from the last week, right? No, uh, no Jonesboro will be from... From today, it's from Saturday morning's TV. If you was at Jonesboro, it's from that Saturday morning, yeah. but Nashville was from last week. Right. Yes, and that, that, you know that's that's what people don't realize is like you, you're not playing a live tape. Uh, you know you're 180 miles there, but you're still playing off last Saturday's tape, right. and you got to put together. You know, you know, you're just playing live was was TV that, that surrounded Memphis. Yeah, you know that's what we was going back to earlier. That Memphis being the hottest territory, yeah, dude. I mean, every Monday night you went to Mid South Coliseum. Yeah, sold out. Ever choose tonight, the Louisville sold out. I mean, you've been to the old War Memorial building in Evansville? Yes, once. Okay, I mean. It wasn't sold out when I was there. Okay, but, but that was, it was, this is years it's ago. It's still, yeah, yeah. Dude. I was there in 90s. Literally, I mean, just jam packed. Yeah. And this, you know, we would we'd go to Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. You've been there? You know, it's no. where the Kentucky, University of Kentucky plays yeah. basketball. So, that was yeah. one of the first big basketball arenas ever built. And we'd go there and it cut it in half. Right. Now they ran that like once a month. The dude, you walk in there and it's to, to wrestle in front of 20,000 people at that time. Yeah. It's crazy, right? It's yes. Surreal. I mean, that cut it in half. I think it's, so it, I mean, it's, it's how oh, twenty something thousand the ring, right. but to to sit there and, and see sixteen or seventeen thousand people 
it hollering so loud you couldn't even hear right. it's unbelievable you feel in the comeback oh, we'll get into the selling how like, the, the rock and roll express selling but um now how's the, how's the pay go up you know do you realize like now okay now all of a sudden you guys are you know part of the wheel you know how you know how do you see the progression of like the the money going up in, in you know memphis first then we made we'll a lot of promoters rich right yeah <laughs> you ain't saying you know and, even being underneath because the territory was so good in Memphis. Yeah. You made decent money. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you really did. You made, uh, don't get me wrong, you didn't make, right, you you made decent make, money. Yeah. I mean, when you work for Nick Hillis and you'd be lucky to clear $125 a week. Right. And then you go to Jerry Jarrett, which the trips are longer, it? but everything. And you, you know, and I gotta say, Jerry did pay good. Yeah. He didn't pay us nothing like the guys on top. but. We made a good living. I mean, we had decent payouts. Now, with the, with that, now merchandising so big now. You know, 2013 and beyond. Merchandising so big. Now, you guys would do like eight by tens and stuff like that. Was that your money or was that somebody else's? Uh, Don't give up. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever! Don't give up. Fight forever! Fight forever! And ever! And ever! And ever! They took a percentage of it. Okay. You, they, you know, back then you couldn't go out and sit and sign the autographs. You right. Know. Mr. Coffee, uh, remember Mr. Coffee no. in Memphis? Uh, well, well, we did. you'd give him your pictures and they'd sell them, and every week on a Monday he'd bring you money to you. Isn't the way it worked? Yeah. Was yeah. it was it good money at the time for the the pictures, or is it you know, well, or is it nowadays it, it's better? You know, people are more in tune with like, oh, okay, I, I need uh, my. I'm going to go to the show, and I'm not only going to watch the show, but I'm going to get it, you know, a Steve Kroon t-shirt, two Rock and Roll Express pictures, and a bandana. It's a whole, they know, have it in their mind. It's yeah. a whole different ball game. You know, not only us, Robert and I, wrestling uh, to get paid, mm -hmm. but our gimmick money, and that's the way I put it. We're at the gimmick table, but that's a big part of our payoff, too. Yeah. That's how we really survive, really, money. And that, now you guys are selling out in Memphis, but before Not Memphis, we go, to, Louisiana. Uh, or, well, you, you know, you're getting bigger, yeah. bigger. Now I, I got it. You know, like how crazy is like you know people that are watching. You know, the, what, how crazy is the women's situation? Like girls are like literally throwing themselves at you on your way to the ring. Like how is it? You know, coming from you know, you were married at the time. Were you married to? Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, you must have loved it. Uh, <laughs> But like, how do you fend that off? Because Cornette told me a story once that uh, he had to get rid of Jericho and, and Lance Storm in, in Smoky Mountain because Lance didn't want to put over the rats. He's like, you guys are baby faces. You should be putting over the rats. And you know, Lance is married and you know, kind of a square guy. Um, and uh, he said, back in the day, you'd get fired if you you know uh, didn't put over the rats. Like. How crazy, like surreal, is it when you're walking to the ring in front of ten thousand people and girls are literally throwing themselves at you? Like, it's got to be. Fun. I mean, you know, can't get my wife to throw myself at we, me. We could stop at a red light and they would jump out of the cars and go at red lights. You know, and I'm, <laughs> was, I'm not going to skip the part <laughs> of Louisiana. No, we're going to go to Louisiana. I mean, I'm not skipping out. the part, but what I'm trying to say here to make an example. Me and my son was just riding in, mm -hmm. and we passed the old Coliseum down here. And I was telling my son here, and it's, and when, and when you try to explain this to some of the boys today, they don't understand. I remember getting out of my car right there at the Coliseum, and by the time I got in the building, I had no clothes. They ripped my fucking clothes off of me. Uh, I couldn't. Well, you, you, you still had your sports jacket on, but the inside shirt. Uh, I wouldn't have no shirt on. I, you know, they would literally get you but 
Dude, I don't know how to put this. When it comes to the women, I'm done. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Because you know, you're, yeah, you're a rock and roll express, but you're rock so, and roll stars, basically. Yeah. Like, well, these when people. we first came in here, and, it, and you got to say this too, the only thing Louisiana had at the time was, was the football team. Yeah. Now, when we first come in, I've been off at TVS in Charlotte. Yeah. Dude, I mean, they shot this thing. Here we are. And the first thing you see when you come into Charlotte coming up 85 or 77, there's a big old billboard mm -hmm. of me and Robert watch Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. Yeah. We were really rock stars that didn't know it. Yeah. Wow. Um, I remember Lafayette, Louisiana, talking about Louisiana. We pulled there one day and Channel 5 News was out there. And me, me and Ricky's first night there, we get out of the car and news people were there. And they want to know what's going on. We said, well, we got wrestling here tonight. They said, no, we know that. What? Who are y'all? People have been camping out here for three days yeah. to wow. buy tickets. Yeah, it sure did. That was, uh, it, it, that, that was unheard of, camping out to buy wrestling tickets. Yeah, well, I would go to the Philadelphia Civic Center every every month. Once you guys you go to Crockett, we'll go there in a little bit. But I love that place. The Philadelphia Civic Center was a great oh, place. Yeah. I used to sit. Greatest wrestling atmosphere oh my goodness and you know and it was because so, it had the reputation as a heel town but yeah. you know that was only for the intro and then they got into it but yes. i would sit every month i would sit second level first row so i like i literally had that beeline to the thing but you know as a kid i would get to the 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 building early and i would remember that like there would be so many like young girls just waiting like at the parking lot for like you guys to arrive but i would wear like i had my rock and roll express t-shirt on but i would wear my four horsemen sweatshirt yeah you know, because i don't want yeah i didn't want it to be you know we had like well, so you, there was the closet played. rock and roll express fans like no, you, you know once we got in the building it got dark we're like yeah. Woo, rock and roll! Yeah. Both yeah, sides yeah. Oh, you had you're some. out back. Here comes the four horsemen. I got yeah, yeah. Look at all, all of a sudden, all of a sudden they go in, yeah. and here comes uh, the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah. And he, <laughs> I oh, got you, dude. But it was so so many it, like Steve. girls. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, just, I would just like be amazed. I remember like going, "Wow, <laughs> if I ever get in a wrestling, I want to be a good guy." Yeah. yeah. Well, I got but, you. So you guys are in Louisiana, and you guys shoot the angle with with Cornet. Now it's it's off to the races. Now is the the angle you shoot with him the 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 birthday kick or is that later? That was that at the first of it. Yeah, the, the, the coup, man. Um, how many times did you guys do the birthday kick with Cornet? Oh, I, I mean, well, I, probably the Guinness World Book of Records. <laughs> yeah. I would imagine. You did Smoky Mountain. I really well, but it was what it's about. That's yeah. how it worked. He was he worked for Ring of Honor for a while, and it was his birthday. And like, I really wanted to, and I felt bad that like these kids didn't realize. I go, we should get Cornette a, a cake. And they're like, by that time, like, guys were mad at Cornette. And uh, they're like, why? I go, well, you gotta shove his head into it. Like, you know, yes. did you ever see the rock and roll? They're like, oh yeah, yeah. I'd be like, ah, oh. it was That's a big crazy. girl now. <laughs> uh, so you guys, are, you guys are there. How long are you guys in uh, Memphis? Or uh, for Louisiana? Three well, years. They, well, Three they years, worked, right? Well, they worked at, and you can see, and now we're going back. Mm -hmm. Now, see, Robert and I, then don't get me wrong, I, I owed a lot to Jerry Jarrett for getting us where we at. But when we done went to, to Louisiana, mm -hmm. and we done shot this angle, well, the fabulous ones left Jerry Jarrett. Right. Now, you understand me? Did they abruptly leave, or did they put in a notice? Uh, or brother, I don't know. It's things, it was heat yeah. between somebody here and somebody there. And, but boom, but me and, me, bro, me and Robert in Louisiana, yeah. we're on top. We're making a lot of, and what not, a lot of, to us, it was a lot of money. Yeah. Not as much as they made, but a lot of money. And all of a sudden they leave. Well, our time's up in Louisiana. Jerry Jerry wants us to come back. It's a verbal deal mm -hmm. that him and Bill Watts made. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, buddy, I mean, uh, what the hell am I going to do that for? I mean, it, see, it's hard to, because the Fabulous Woods were established, they was there over. Don't get me wrong, I don't know what would happened if it did go back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's like the same thing when we left Louisiana, they tried to put the Fantastics, Bobby Fulton and Tommy Rogers. Yes. It don't work. Right. You understand me? Yeah, it didn't work in Crockett either. Yeah, yeah. it don't work. Yeah. But they would, you know, they sent us back to uh, Memphis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Robert walked back in there. I never forget. Jerry, Jerry come in and says, "All right, guys, we'll put y'all on a fifteen hundred dollar a week guarantee. Super, super yeah. money." 
More than you were making in Louisiana? Uh, well, you know, understand you got paid by how many yeah. taxes were in seats. Yeah. But Louisiana did. Let me tell you, it's a hard territory. I was going to say, we're going to go into Nobody even that. understands. Yeah. It. You I didn't have any states. Right. Back then. I mean, you only My had 10 was that. That one, this yeah. one, that one only went east and west. Yeah. And the Louisiana, <laughs> the other shit. But I mean, you come back inside there and I. And I made a little comment to Bill Watts before our, and Bill Dundee before I, I left Louisiana. So I called me Robert in there and we're gonna do this. I says, no, we're gonna give our two week notice. <laughs> we're leaving. Then we, we went back to Louisiana. Wow. It's now, supposed to be just a trial run anyway. Just go ahead yeah. and try it out. But Bill Watts figured how much money he can make. He wanted us back in his territory. Yes. Wow. Now, when you go back to, to Memphis first before you, you, you put in your notice, do you feel like it, you know, you're know you almost like a, a major league ball player being traded? Like, all right, guys, we're well, going to finish up here and we're going to send you to this team. Well, you did sort of. Or who suggested, do you, you suggest like, hey, look, I think I've been here long enough? Or does does Bill Watts say, hey, look, you know, I worked something out with Jerry Jarrett. You know, you're going to finish up here, we're going to send you there. Yeah, but but when we did go back, you know, and see, and you understand this, the really hyped up with, you know, you know, I tell you what, Stephen Stan went to w, AWA for Vern Gagne. Yeah, okay, yes. They yeah. left to go there. Well, you know, and when we was there, you know, you got to see, it, you know, I love Jerry Jarrett. I love them, but business-wise, I felt like they slapped Robert Nye in the face. Mm -hmm. Really, I did. Is that because they expected you to replace the Fabs, or, when, or no? It's it... way, the way we was treated while we was there with the Fabs. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, me and Robert didn't have the luxury of work. Well, I lived in Nashville. Yeah. To work Nashville on Saturday night, you know, I was three hundred and fifty miles away oh, right. in Jonesboro every Saturday night. Right. You yeah, know, you weren't. You weren't. Robert on the, and I on the, were the, the ones that show. were in Tupelo, Mississippi. Yeah. You know, but we 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 did good business, but still, it, it wasn't. A, really bad but I feel like they you know they want us to come and do this right here but you slapped us in the face before mm -hmm. and, and now you and now us, at yeah. the time that on our own that Robert and I went to Louisiana and popped the territory right I mean I mean I'm, you can't take that away from us don't expect us just to leave that behind and come here mm -hmm. we, you don't know I mean and I think Jerry realized that too, but I mean, we were going back. Yeah. No matter what, I was going, Robert and I were going back to Louisiana. Do you remember the, the issue to that made you want to put in your notice, or was it the mindset when you came back? Like, you but know, when we they, settled out everywhere in Louisiana, and all of a sudden yeah, we had to go back to Memphis. Yeah, we knew we were yeah. going back to Memphis just to give our notice. We knew we were going back to Louisiana. Yeah. So oh, yeah. It, it, you knew it right away. Oh, yes. Now, the Louisiana Territory is notoriously famous for being the toughest territory because, you know, some, you were driving, what, 300 miles, 350 a on day? On two-lane highways. On a two-lane highway. Yes. You know, I, you hear the stories, D.B. 100 miles an hour every day, you know, not even thinking these guys, you know, get in the car. And you guys were working six, seven days a week? Yeah, every day. So every day, you're buddy, basically, seven days a week. You're basically living in the car. Like how how does that affect you? It's a, you know, or is it just a mindset? It's like, do you, would you guys sleep and then drive during the day, or was it? Well, we did everybody have well, something we different. We drove, you know, if you was tired, you just got in the back and slept, and somebody else drove. But even though you 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 go through that, and it's we're going back to the boys. We had a great crew there. Great crew. Now at the time, it, it was, you're you're talking '84, so you're you're talking still uh, Deviasi's there, Doctor Death, right? Oh yeah, Hacksaw Jim, uh, Doug, Hacksaw Magnum, Jim T.A., Terry Taylor, yeah, Robert and I, the Midnight Express. Uh, you know, I think Barry Darso done left to, went to N.W.A. to get mm -hmm. over with him and Ivan. But even though saying all this, that it was notorious for the trips, and literally to say it, I'm here to say it right now, I had more fun in that territory than I had anywhere. Yeah. It was, I mean, guys, it was great. The boys were the boys. We all, most of us all lived in the same apartment complex, which was a fairly new one, but it was small. I called it the back drop in, you know, because all the boys lived there. Yeah. Uh, and, then, you know, we didn't have to go. You know, we met that morning. We knew it. Just how we made our living. Yeah. You know, if we're going to Little Rock. You see, there's these guys like driving 100 miles an hour. They drove 100 miles an hour. We knew our job. Yeah. We always left early. We had to go to work. 
You know, and plus another thing, if you was late for Bill Watts, he'd find your ass. Right, that's a, that's what I was, Jack yes. Nichols used to tell me that. But now, do you think it's it's one of those things where, you know, you, it's your mindset of your, your job and stuff like that. If you write this down on paper, like, so what did you do? Oh, you know, I beat each other up for, you know, 25, 30 minutes a night. Then we would sleep for a little bit, and then we would drive 350 miles on a two-lane highway to, and, then, <coughs> and somebody would read this, and you they'd go, what are you too crazy? And then you, but you would think about like yeah. some of the best times of my life. You know, it, it's one Dude. thing like that, that professional wrestling lifestyle and that love that you have for it. Like a normal person can't understand. Like they can't fathom. Like back in them days, you drive four or five hundred miles. That was every day. Yeah. yeah. We and, see, you know, Steve. This this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. When you're the boys, you're a different whole breed. Yes. You know that. Yeah, it's a different life. It's a yeah, different you're... life. It's a different, everything's different. Yeah. This is what we, it's what we do. To us, it wasn't no problem. Yeah. But to somebody else reading this going, oh, what the, f you go, what are y'all doing? Yeah, like, oh, wait, you, you, I don't understand. Like, well, how can you? Yeah. How could you even do that? Yeah. Yes. And, and, and it's so funny trying to explain it to, like, person that's not into wrestling like they, they don't uh, they, know about our business they're upset of it that they got a 20 minute drive to work every day and the, you know when they go to the beach it's an hour drive wait an hour drive i'm like an hour drive i wish i had a show that was an hour right. away no, no shit dude yeah okay i'd sleep in so um now it, we're, we're talking 84 early 85 that you're, you're still in louisiana mm -hmm. now uh who comes calling crockett or is it something that watson crockett put together or is it dusty we were, we were in the Superdome, and uh, Crockett comes in. Mm -hmm. Well, first, uh, can I say that? I don't mean to interrupt him, but I know I do. I'm not hogging the show. No, man. that's good. Robert, uh, go get something to drink. No, oh, yeah. no <laughs> this is my buddy in there. We was in the Superdome, and i uh, never forget, uh, Mama Lee was there that night. And I was, uh, Ric Flair was there. But see, Rick had come into the territories. Like, really didn't know Rick, but mm -hmm. we knew Rick. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, because yeah. we, when Rick come in, he'd fly in and stay over, but we had to go. Uh, Rick Flair had seen what we done down there in Louisiana, you know, and uh, we were sitting in the dressing room, and I noticed you hear Mama Lolly comes in with his entourage, you know, you don't know who the hell all these people are, and. Bye -bye. And all of a sudden, here comes Rick Flair with a little man behind him. I had no clue who he mm -hmm. was. I had no damn idea. Everybody's in there, Bob. They're all trying to gather around Muhammad Ali. I love Muhammad Ali because he would just blow him off. Not to be an asshole. Because I, had, I never forget my oldest son, Jonathan. He's sitting in the floor playing cards with him. And I'm looking at him, and he looks up at me. He goes, is it all the promoters over there? I said, yeah. He says, they steal and rob from you. <laughs> He says, I'm looking at, didn't you remember that? He says, I ain't, I ain't got time for him. He sat there and talked to me and Robert. And he was one of the boys, kid. right? you damn right he yeah. was one of the boys. But then everything's get going and starting, and then everybody walks out, and here's this little man over here. Well, he comes up to me, to me and Robert, he goes, listen, I'm a Jimmy Crockett. He says, I been a lake wrestling in North Carolina. I said, oh man, I never met you. It's a pleasure to meet you. My dad worked for you. He said, yeah. He said, I'm, I'm just taking over TPS, Iowa Atlanta, Georgia. He said, y'all are the reason I'm here. He says, I, wow. I flew to Charlotte to hear Rick Flair. He says, I heard so much about y'all. Uh, I want to see your match tonight. And lucky that night, I think we're working with Ted DiBiase we work with Ted, Ted Duck. Doc? Ted Duck. Yeah. And I went and told him, I said, I said, Ted, you know, the boys are close. Yeah. I told him, I said, damn, Doc, Ted, I says, uh, Robert, we're in there, and this man's going to see Jimmy Crockett. I said, he come here to watch us work tonight. And Ted DiBiase goes, hey, we're going to give that son of a bitch a lot to see. Oh, nice. So, like, he knew right then. In he the knew audition. that they were looking at yep. us. And he, you know, you boys knew we, my boom, did. Yeah. And literally say we went out and worked. Fantastic match, mm -hmm. buddy. I mean, God, you're in Superdome. Yeah, yeah. You know, in Superdome was the start of all this stuff. Yeah. People don't realize that either, you know, of, of, the, so, of the closed circuits. And then, you know, that was the big show. We did 48,000. In... Wow. <laughs> yeah, people. Because that's, yeah. A, that, I mean, the, for people that don't that. know, the Superdome is... 
Huge. Huge. Yes, but Huge. then we came back and, uh, but we literally tore the house down because it was an angle with Ted and Doc. And, and uh, he came back in, called me and Robert to the side and he explained what was going on. He says, uh, are you interested in coming? And you see, now it's another step, another chapter. Yeah. It's time to, let's take this chance, Robert, let's go. And then now do you guys realize like, okay. This is nationwide TV. Exactly, now Jimmy's taking over yes. uh, TBS. Now uh, you know this is this is your opportunity to but, but it's, not only just be Louisiana territory, but this is, you become national stars. Yeah, but you know, instead of the Greenboro Braves, we're playing for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. You understand me? I'll never forget Jim Crockett said, guys, he says, I'm gonna be, be honest with you. He said, my territory is very bad. We ain't drawing, it's nothing like what y'all see, what mm -hmm. y'all got here. He said, we'd like to bring y'all in. Yeah, he said, we're not drawing good. And Dusty had just started booking for him, right? Uh, yeah, or was I think Dory been still... there for a while. Okay, yeah, I didn't know. And, uh, and I, this is great, too, because I guess Dusty knew what was coming. And, and, and you know, a lot of people can say a lot of bad things about Dusty, and me and him never get a lot. I mean, we got along great, but he did have a good mind for this business. Mm -hmm. And i got to say this right here. Now, before we come in there, you know, the Russians, yep. Ivan, Nikita, very, they beat every body in that territory yeah so dominating what, too and that's what they forget about in our business today how to make money yeah is they don't know they don't understand they just want to throw somebody on tv and talk about your mama and do them in the ass and boom boom we got to sell out and they don't draw shit excuse me for saying that i'm just trying to make yeah sodomy fun. never draws but here you go the russians yeah they beat everybody. I'm talking Dusty Rhodes. Manny. I'm talking yeah. all of Magnum T.A. Yeah, Carnoodle. Yep. They beat them by boom. Now, here they go. They're showing Robert and I all these videos of us, especially of us out of Louisiana, of Bamba Doo, the Dee Da Da. Yeah. See, I just said that Bamba Dee Ba Dee Ba Da, and nobody out there understood that but you. And Robert. <laughs> <laughs> right? Y'all understood what I said. But by the way, we come in and shoot this angle with the Russians. Yep. Not First shoot night in. Yeah. First night in, we beat them. These two little kids have been showing on TV and flying headed back to the same thing. All American kids. Yeah. But Ivan, the, you know, the, the workhorse. Russian bear. And, and the big Barry and Nikita, buddy. <laughs> Unbeatable, and here we and go. You guys selling your asses off. The That's, David yeah. and Goliath yes. syndrome of what we're fixing to do. And Robert and I beat them for the world title. Yep. Oh, I remember yeah. that like it was that yesterday. Was a whole hour on TV. Yep. I remember it like it was yesterday. No. You guys fought from underneath the, the whole time. Here's your debut. And then, like, you know, here you are. The first five minutes, I'm like, these guys are overmatched. You know, I've read about them in the yeah. magazine. Yeah. Oh, these guys are just overmatched. And then, like, there would be the, these little comebacks where, like, I'm at the TV. I'm, you know, I'm tw uh, 12 years old, right? I'm like, holy shit. We had just gotten, you know, uh, more of the, the, the worldwide wrestling TV just became syndicated in Philadelphia. Yes. TBS. So now it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, and near the end of the TV, to, uh, you know, all of a sudden, one, two, three, and that place, like, I mean, my living room used to, it used to be me and four of my friends, like, we exploded, but just watching it now, like, that crowd, like, crazy, crazy like, you guys did something that Dusty couldn't do, Manny, you know, um, Jimmy Valiant, like, these guys were running yes. over, like, they were heels, like, you'd always think, like, think back now, or today, like, Babyface always has to win at the end. But like here they were beating Dusty and Manny. There was no end in sight. Yes. It's the height of the Cold War, you know, every you know. And here you guys come and like you just shock the world and like right away. Boom. You were there. Boom. Yeah. And, 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 and now you still understand this. Now we just left Bill Watson. Bill yeah. Watson, if you knew you know this, after Robert and I won those world titles we had to go back to louisiana and finish up our notice Remember oh that? really so there was a there was an overlap wow so you oh, guys yeah, we had tag to go team back. champs going see the people hadn't uh, 
seen us yet. Yeah. I mean, they just seen us on TV. And then, you know, boom, they, see, they filmed it on Tuesday night. That's not going to show, I guess, it to Charlotte Saturday. Yeah. All right. And then we come back in. I remember, you know, like Jimmy Crockett told us, the territory's down. Our, we are the world champions, blah, 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 blah. And we start in Fayetteville, North Carolina, our first Whoa. night. Right? Robert and I get to Fayetteville, Fayetteville North Center, Carolina, right? and above a do. And this place is, and I never, I think yeah. Jimmy Vallette, or somebody was riding with us. Tommy Young, I believe. Tommy Young goes, my God, look at these people. What are they doing? What's going on here? Is there a car wreck? I thought, I thought there was something going on. Is there a car wreck up here? What's going on? Look here. That was Robert and I's first night. See, because you ran Fayetteville on Monday night in Greenville, South Carolina. Yep. On a Monday night. But see, our little program went to boom. We go into Fayetteville, do an hour Broadway with the Russians. Place sold out, man. Great. And the next we see, and we sold that place out for like six weeks in a row, mm -hmm. right? Well, Greenville hadn't seen us yet. Right. Okay, now it's time to switch the talent. Go we go to Greenville, boom, bam, and we sell this son of a bitch out for like six weeks. That's on Monday nights, you know what I'm saying? I remember our first night going to Raleigh. <clears throat> we did we did $48,000 money-wise. Right. The next morning, we remember get a phone call, and it's Dusty. He wanted to just come to the office. He said, guys, y'all my main ball players. <laughs> he said, I'm going tell you something. He said, y'all just broke the 20-year, 50-year record. He said, the record was a Ric Flair and Black Jack Mulligan. They did 28,000. Wow, night, so you, you guys. Our first night, we did 48. Double. He goes, Dusty said, that's, he said, that's like Bay Roof. That record would never be broken. Two weeks later, we were back in Raleigh. We did 54,000. Yes. Wow. With sure. the Russians. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we broke our old record, 48, 54. Yes. You know, and a lot of people, since they, they built all these big arenas, and yeah, I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. I'm really telling the truth about a wrestling business. Before they built all these, like in Charlotte here, you know, where the Bobcats play. Yeah. And, and like these small towns. And this is not only here in North Carolina, this is in Louisiana too. Like a, like Shreveport, you know, that's where all these rocks. You know, we broke all of Elvis Presley's records of wow. attendance wise. You know, because we wrestled in a lot of the old buildings. Yeah, that he had performed that in. That he performed yeah. in. You know, because at that time they, they were still big buildings. Yeah. And and what a great compliment. That's just not being that. It, but it, but I'm not saying Ricky Morton, Robert, it took all of us to do yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it Good took crew the crew and stuff it, like it, that. It took the crew. It took the, the knowledge of Dusty to knowing what we're doing. Now, what was your, like, initial thoughts on Dusty? Had you had any, like, interaction with Dusty before? You guys went to Charlotte. Man, so he'd be in and out, right? Yeah, like, he's different territories. He was a, he was he was a a we never worked for him before. But like when you start working for him, do you know? I I, but I, am, but I owe Dusty my my career from ECW, yeah. but like you know, but I've also seen the other side of Dusty that people talk about too. Yeah, damn like, right. <laughs> are, are you like you know in, not intrigued, but like are enthralled by like this guy? You know, he, he talks the talk and he's got this vision, and all of a sudden, you know, houses are drawing and. You well, know, when the house start drawing you, at that time you're the candy kid. Yeah, right. Okay, you yeah. Understand. So he's, you're you're his boys. <clears throat> but one thing I did, and uh, let's no, we're gonna go back to the things, and we're gonna, and then I come right back to where we at. See, a lot of people say the tag team wrestling is dead now, but it's not. It, no. It, it's, nobody knows how to do it. It's still my favorite thing yeah, to watch. Nobody, it's just four guys yeah. that can do. But you get your pleasure. Yeah. You watch. Nobody knows how to do it. Right. And it, it's a work of art. It's something that you got to taste. It. And Robert and I created our own way of being tag team wrestling. I mean, I, and I'm not saying that we start. I mean, we created our way. Yeah. You guys had you a see, formula, right? Our yeah, way. Been, yeah. You can understand me, buddy. My life, you know, and, I, and I'm. After that, you know, I go to these towns. I'm like, all right, we're going to do these high spots. And I said, but listen, stop. I don't do high spots. I sell. Yeah. What are you talking about? I said, I sell and I give Robert Gibson a hot tag. Yeah. This and is what I do. Yeah. And I'm, and, and I worked, and see, guys don't understand. It ain't about me going out there 
and Robert and I both, we work on this together. We tell a story about me getting the heat. And you see, it's just important. Is that guy being on the outside of that rope? Mm -hmm. Is it his cell in the ring? Because he has Robert to feel and I, your pain too, right? Robert yeah. and I have got to tell the story. Yeah. That was my job. Now, it, to me personally, when I was in the ring, now I'm sitting there selling, and I got the guy I'm working with asking me, God damn, are you all right? You know, and I always yeah, laugh. Yeah, because you're here. Yeah, like, oh, God damn. Now, that's the guy I'm working with. Now I'm looking at that guy on the front row. He's going, oh, God damn, he's really hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, that guy on the front row is crying. Times you were. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of you, and, and if that guy right there believed that, what do you think about that fucker way up there in that balcony? Yeah. You see, yeah, that was my theory. And to do what we do, but but doing it to tell that story. And but it was believable too, like the way you sold too. You know, yeah. You know, sometimes guys would oversell, and you'd be like, ah, like oh, oh, I got punched in the face. I wouldn't be, you know. But like you, you would somebody would you'd start to fire up. Someone punch you in the face, and you would sell that face. You know what I mean? Because well, you know, people are like, oh, that still hurts. You know, you'd come from underneath and like. The first time I ever worked with Brian Lee, well, a lot of guys, I locked up with them. They took me to the corner. I said, give me a big punch. Well, they punched me, and I go all the way to my hand. Yeah. And sell it. This is the first one that's. Brian Lee's sitting there going, what I do? <laughs> yeah. I said, just let me sell it. Yeah. That's all you got to do is let me sell. And they were surprised them because they never seen nothing. But we're down, we, we're getting back into to where we're going to about, we did an angle. You know, Dusty would talk to us about it, and I'd sit down in my head. See, what? Well, because a lot of people don't understand, when you're a booker, you got something in your mind that you know that's going to draw. Yeah. It, you know it's going to happen, but then you got to look at your talent and see who can pull this off. See, that's the reason a lot of bookers got a lot of heat, because they used yourself. Yeah, but you could depend on yourself, too. That and was angles, the theory, right? And they, they knew what you wanted. Yeah. And the reason, well, it's, they depended because they knew what's going to draw, and they didn't have the talent capable, really, of doing what he really yeah. wanted to the last letter I. Mm -hmm. You understand? So when we did these angles, that's what we sit down. Laura and I would think about how we're going to do this to get this perfectly right. And when Dusty explained that to us, See, we could pull that off. Right. Okay. Because he could like, tell a story. Like, yes. you know, and he had the, the, the big dreams yeah. and he could. In the other it, days, a lot of bookers got a lot of heat because, oh man, he uses himself in every angle. Yeah. He uses himself in every angle because he knows what he's want. He knows and how I, to execute. And I don't think you know how to do that. Right. Okay. Oh, and, and, you know, in that time, you know, now we're talking to 85. What a all star cast. That's in Charlotte, you know. You, oh. you're, huh? What a family. Yeah. You're, you're, All of a sudden, it became a hotbed of wrestling. Absolutely, yeah. With the, you know, what a great time for TBS to take over. Right. Now you got a young Arn Anderson, a, a Tully Blanchard that's, you know, just making that huge push, you know. Yes. Flair's on, on top. Um, you know, Ole's still got an influence. You have the Rock and Roll Express. You got, you know, the Midnight Express come in. The Russians are yeah. ha, have the, the most heat. Jimmy Bannon still is your... Rick Rude. Yeah. Uh, and it goes on and on, buddy. Oh my goodness! Now, um, now here's now here. How's the pay as opposed to Louisiana or Memphis? Now you're in Charlotte, right. and now you guys are drawing. Well, okay, guys, now, the, do, do you know Steve, this is something that you really don't understand? Robert and I. Well, I know for me, I wasn't educated enough mm -hmm. to, to know. I know I was caught up in being on top. I was caught up in selling these arenas out. And I got so caught up, I didn't know that we got bent over and got it stuck in so far that it came out the other side. And what really fucked me up is they didn't kiss me. Now, is That's, that like the, just the, the promoter manipulation? Like, you know, dude, they, give them enough to make them happy, but don't give them enough, give them as much well, as they deserve? They, well, they rob us blind. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I didn't even know until it's over, you know, that, you know, Jimmy, like Bobby Eaton, they, they had a, a contract where they made so much a year, no matter what. Right. 
Was, but you guys didn't? didn't? No, we didn't know nothing about it. We didn't have contracts. I knew something was wrong one time when, when we... This uh, is on, no on, shit. On great American bashes, we get our checks, and over here, Tommy Young, hell, he made more money than we did. Referee. Really? That's how bad it is, buddy. I mean, I'm, I'm, you, and you, nobody understands this. You can say what you want to, but when we were stars, we didn't know the education about the money wise. Jimmy Crocker literally fucked us. Yeah. Now, and I want you to stop and think about this right here. I have a little 45 record I did. Boogie the Boogie most Dance horrible Hall. song in the world, the Boogie Woogie Dance Hall. I liked it. I bought it. Oh, well, listen. This came in a Rock and Roll Express package. I got it. With me and Robert. Yeah. Big poster. It sold for twenty nine ninety five. Nineteen ninety five. Well, you know that little record is a golden record. Really? Well, they sold over a million they copies. Sold over a million thing. copies in that thing. Holy shit! Uh, in nineteen ninety five. That's twenty million. Nineteen ninety five. 1995 for the... Oh, yeah. Thing. It was 1995. Okay. Now, you got to understand. A million copies. Buddy. We didn't get none of that money. You didn't get it's, one thing away. We didn't get nothing from yeah, it. Did you get, like, merchandise That's from, like, T-shirts? Yeah. Uh, one time, you guys' T-shirts were in, like, Walmart. You dude, know, dude, middle listen, 80s, dude. I, I would visit my parents in North Carolina, and I would be like, holy shit, you can get Rock and Roll Express shirts in Walmart. Yeah. That's the greatest place ever. Listen, dude. Out of that? When I when Jimmy Crockett went bankrupt or whatever, you know we wanted our we, we tried to sue him. Yeah. To get royalties. our money royalties, you know, but they robbed us. Yeah. Okay. Well, he done child. He done file chapter eleven. So we got to go through this lawyer bit and the, and to make it understand, they got the guy that sold gimmicks for Jimmy Crockett. Yeah. And they told him to get on the stand and don't lie and you tell us the truth and no matter what the outcome is, we won't prosecute you and you will not get no prison time. And they was asked about the gimmick. He says, well, you know, he stowed over a million dollars. Just the gimmick guy. He stowed. Holy now, that's not counting for He stowed over a million dollars. He says, and he kept... And they didn't do nothing to him about it. Yeah. Okay, anyway, me and Robert had to sell out of court for what, like two cents on a dollar? Yeah. You know what? I mean, but we got nothing. Yeah. Wow. Now, do you believe that Dusty knew this all the whole time, too? Or? Well, damn, dude, you stop and think. Uh, there's a fucking jet airplane out there. There's a G1. Guys have Mercedes. Uh, you know, Dusty driving a new Mercedes. Uh, yeah, Crockett had no. got them big old mansions and houses yeah. over there, and uh, you got from, damn from right. The territory that, that Crockett said was on his butt, all of a sudden buying two new planes. Yeah, yeah, and you guys are selling so, dude, out buddy, everywhere. You, you now, got damn right. They you referee, were stealing from then us. Then the referee gets a bigger paycheck than you. Yeah. You got damn right. They knew they were <laughs> stealing from us. You got right, right. Yeah, they knew, right? And see, a lot of guys thinking, "Oh man, you made millions." No. Yeah, they made millions. I think my biggest year ever in this business, Steve, and, I, and I'm not bullshitting you, I think it was between, between either $125,000, $150,000. Really? I would my biggest year that. ever had this business. And I we would have thought 86, 87, you guys would have been three should, or 400. It should have been. It yeah. should have been. Oh, we should have been retired. Yeah. But they, Holy jeez. But it, they fucked us. And, uh, and I'm... Is that a four-letter word? Whatever way you want to put it. I mean, that's what they don't understand. What you, you know, guys think about this very back and forth. I mean, uh, it's getting over. Whatever. Well, I've had a great run, but we got. Yeah. You know, they think we should be rich. At the end of the day, you still got to come and work. Think, at the time I was married, I went through a divorce. Oh, well, uh, and back then, time when I take day eight, rode around, brother, I was broke. And you know, you know and back then days, they say wrestle seven days a week, but actually we was wrestling nine days a week. Well, wow. because you're doing twice double on shots. Saturdays and twice on Sunday, and we went nine months without a day off. Wow. No, yes. and, you, and, you, and it's not like you're doing the Bundy matches where you're coming in, doing no, three minutes doing and going, oh, hour, you guys yeah. are good. Yeah, you guys are going hour broadways. And Dude, so, so twice right. a day sometimes. Oh, and and we, asked, we asked to take off, and, and Crockett's thing was, if we leave y'all off, we're going to lose $20,000. 
Yes. If y'all stay home and I will. But in your mind, you're thinking, I'm not seeing that yeah, 20,000 bucks. Well, no, we're not. Yeah. Well, we, well at the time, had, we went up. They, 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 they had us going so fast that we didn't know what we were Yeah, and at the time, it, the education of... Uh, we already had I time to stop and think. We was trying. Yeah, you didn't. And, you're, it, the, and the territories exploded. You know, it, instead of Charlotte, Spartansburg, Raleigh, now yes. you're now you're Atlanta. Now you're Florida. Now you're Philly, Baltimore, I LA, yeah, well, Minnesota, Portland, Oregon. You know. Oh, I became a Rock and Roll Express fan yeah, from the magazines, but I would go to the Philadelphia Civic Center <clears throat> all the time. Now, I, I want to say it's late '85 or early '86. Jim Crockett Promotions puts out a thing on TV of the Rock and Roll Express Lookalike Contest. Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just seen that the kid uh, that, that won kid. that not long ago. I remember him. Yeah. He's now small. he's married. He got four kids, and it would really flip me out when I seen this guy. I thought it was bullshit. I didn't think he looked like you guys. Yeah. Oh, was you hot? Hey, you tell you a little story. Let me see. I'll, I'll tell you why I was hot. Let me see why. Do you have a picture? Because. Because he entered. This. Yeah. <laughs> you know the story, right? These are from 19. I was Robert, and my buddy Steve was Ricky Morton. Uh, 1985. Wow, we were so we were so happy that we sent them in. Look at this. <laughs> 85. 80. You know what, buddy? And, and I've known you for a long time, Steve. And I never knew. I mean, I didn't know this. But when I seen you reach in that pocket, I knew what you was going yeah. on. Like, how many cool. guys do that? Dude? It's, it's not only cool. guys... That's a great compliment. Right. I mean, do you see that? Like, oh, uh, we'll put me. it on the, the video. That's me. You look. Yeah. I can tell that. The but we had baseball was... pants that we dyed uh, like a light purple, and we went to a sports store and it had rock and roll put on the side. <laughs> we went to a, a flea market, got as many bandanas as possible. That's how we started. Like, the we flea even, market. we, we even had like knee pads. First steps. Oh my goodness! We even had knee pads, yeah. and then we had like things over it that had like Robert and, and <laughs> rock and roll and. <laughs> You know, well, man, you just don't understand. What a great compliment, Steve. Yeah. It is. I mean, but... I just thought it was bullshit and I, and, that we and lost. <laughs> and I don't want you to think right now, as, as uh, you being in the business and knowing what our business is and everything else, that you was ever embarrassed of doing that. No. No, it was... It's a great compliment. It was the coolest thing we, we, we did, did at the time, right. man. It was, uh, Come here, man. That's, that's uh, a <laughs> You see, I mean, it's got express on the thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm 12 or 13. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. Well, you look at a little story about that. The kids that won the look like contest, they got to go have dinner with us, plus they got to go to Carowinds. So let me tell you what happened to Carowinds. We go to Carowinds, and we walk in. I, I met another buddy, you know Delbert. Yeah. Delbert was doing t-shirts there and he, he he does it every day every every day at the there. Yeah, we, we, we didn't know it. you didn't know him at the time didn't know him at the time anyway his story is he's standing there and all of a sudden he looks to the left and here comes like two thousand people down the aisle he's like what the hell is going on well as we pass by him we go down here we get on the we get on the uh roller coaster we take off on the roller Those coaster kids. and all of a sudden all of a sudden it, you hear the brakes they, they stop the roller coaster here comes security they come out there and said, guys, y'all have got to leave the park. Yes. Everybody in the Carowinds right now are at the entrance or exit gate. Oh, yes. my goodness. They're yeah, waiting for you guys. Now, yeah. they stopped the roller coaster before it got to the thing. Mm -hmm. And so we're like a movie. We climbed over that thing. We had thing, to climb out and get door. out to get us out of the park. Oh. We, they asked us to leave the park. Well, I mean, not be able to, we could come back after they shut <laughs> it down. I hope it ruined those kids' day. Yeah. <laughs> no, we had a great time with them. Ah, could you imagine those? But we went back right? with them, didn't we? We went yeah. back with them after the park Like, like Delbert said, closed. he goes, can you imagine? Yeah. The old two guys actually shut down the park. Right? That's, that's rock stars. Yes, yeah. we sure did. And, <sighs> now, and the winter dates. Huh? We had a winter date. I don't remember that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my mom tried that. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, uh, uh, we were Robert's only two that went a date with these guys, and we go to the big Broadway show, Cats, and we both fall asleep. It's like, <laughs> we were out, yeah, we were yeah. No, look here. It, to me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a Broadway guy. To me, I think, were they hot, though? Like, did they go through, like... Oh, yeah, but or... it was a whole busload of them. Yeah. You know? Wow. Did you do it in, like, different towns, or... The yeah, when they, they, yeah. when, remember we had the rock and roll... Super, Super Summer Sizzler. Sizzler. Super Summer Sizzler, Troy, yeah. Say it five times. Super Summer Sizzler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay. And, uh... They rented us, you know, they had us uh, the big Rock and Roll Express bus, mm -hmm. and we had all of them on there, and 
That is, we got a lot of heat for this. We get too. almost three hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in that week in little towns. Yeah, that's small towns wow, and money. Wow. But this is where we got a lot of heat too. Robert and I the boys. Yeah, we love the guys. Here we go, man. We got these people on this bus. Rock and Roll Express down the side of it. Oh, damn, you talking about stopping traffic? Yeah, dude. And we be in these town, boy. People, bam, bam. Police have to come and get us. But we have that big bus. We be parked out there, and all them people around there, and and yet you know they, they get the girls and stuff off and get them seats and stuff. Well, we go get the boys. Oh, the boys uh, get them. No, no, they, they didn't want them to. What the hell, y'all? Come on, man. We get on that bus. And it was cool. It was a party time. Decked out Bill Bus, you know, like you will, like rock stars. Yeah. You know? yeah it, was it was really good. You know, we got a lot of. You know, it's another thing they didn't like back then, because Robert and I were the boys. Yeah. Uh, you know, Rocky Johnson. Yeah, yeah. No, Rocky Johnson. Rocky King. Rocky, Rocky King. King. Yeah. He was one of the other Neath boys. Yeah. You know, they kept telling us, you know, uh, because we and Robert go to the town, we, you know, we were row with us. You, you can't hang out with underneath the boys, y'all. You know, for bullshit. So we just hired Rocky to drive me and Robert around. <laughs> nice. And then Jimmy <laughs> Crockett sure. got mad, so finally he come to a part where hell he's at every town, so they started booking him in every town yeah. with us. And he'll tell you that. Yeah. He made a hell of a limit. Well, <laughs> first, first, yeah, first Crockett fired him, then we hired him. <laughs> yeah, sure did. Uh, Crockett yeah. fired him, we hired him. And he was a good underneath guy. He had a hell of a match with Flair yeah. on TV yeah. once. The reason we hired him was mainly just to uh, <coughs> grab our bags because we had to fight to get the dressing room. Yeah. yeah. We couldn't get out of the car. Just You know, and tired. And he'd drive. Yeah. Yeah. Greensboro Coliseum, I just bought a brand new 1988 Trans Am. Looked like the Night Rider. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ricky drive to uh, Greensboro, and we get out. No, we didn't get out. We got we stayed well, in the goddamn car for an hour out. and forty five minutes. That's that's when you remember Doug Dillinger. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's how he got his job. He was over the security thing. I mean, look, look here, Robert got a brand new car, and you got people that are. I'm, I can't. I don't know how far back they are, but the one right here is next to me. Their face is uh, smashed into that window. They're on top of his car. They're I'm everything. blowing the horn, screaming, "Get the! Yeah, oh, get the car. It's a brand new oh, car, right? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. that black one, black on black, but they have triple. Look here, man. They pulled in people away. Look like you've been in a fucking hailstorm. Mm. <laughs> wow. Oh so yeah. That, after that, that's when they had to put the fence up around the coliseum to keep the people out. Yeah. yeah. Sure it is. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but it's great. It's again, that's why Doug and you went on that Doug would took that all the way through WCW. Yeah, he did a long he time. He had his job at the police force and you know what, he made more money than we did. <laughs> Just being a Now the rock and roll or the Midnight Express come in and you guys renew the feud that you did in Louisiana for amazing business. Now you guys do the, the title switch to them on a huge free show on TBS. Do you remember that? No. February 2nd, 86. I can remember that. I was hot. Pissed. But, you know, they, they take the belt, and then you guys chase them for six months. Literally six months. Yes. And it comes into August 16th, 1986. Philadelphia Civic Center. Now, this is... I, I brought this up to Dusty once, and, like, he laughed at me. Here I am, a 13-year-old kid. It's also my aunt's wedding. Yeah. I got a decision to make. You know, it's, you know, do I go to the wedding, or, you know... Do I go to the, you know, Rock and Roll Express? Now, at the time, it, Magnum and Nikita were having that best of seven. What I didn't realize at the time is, you know, they were 3-3 three, three in the best of seven, but they were going around the loop doing double DQs everywhere. Yeah. And me and my buddies all thought, well, it started in Philly with the 86 bash. It's going to end in Philly. We are going to, we're so smart. So we get there, and I'm thinking, you know, you guys are the... the you know, against the World Tag Team Champions, you, you guys are doing the thing, you're getting screwed every time. Yeah. It's, it's to the point where I'm like, fuck, they're never gonna win the belts back. Nikita and Magnum do another double count out. I'm like, fuck. And I remember everybody being like, uh, here you guys come. And it's, it's the first time I've seen that it's kind of like, it's not as like, for the first five minutes, it's not, as like rabbit as usual, Matt, uh, Man Express Rock and Roll Express. Man. You don't want because it was a hill town. We had to get them going. Yeah, exactly. The and then and, and they were okay. so amped up to see that they thought they were going to see the Magnum Nikita thing. But within five minutes, here it comes. And then, as like the match progresses, you were like, 
wait a second, I think this is the night, you know, this is not them. And um, uh, it was two out of three falls, you know, and you, you know, the, the baby face went away, he'll win that double DQ on the next or whatever. Man, you guys win the belt and that place just goes erupt. Yeah, and it was the first title uh, change I had ever seen as a live well, as a kid. Wow. And, and I understand I, what you yeah, I skipped my aunt's wedding 27 years later. She reminds me, remember when you missed my wedding? You go, and I thought, so the Rock and Roll Express was a world tag team title I, that night. You know, and I'm glad you just said that about the baby faces chasing the heels. Yeah. You see, that's what people don't understand either. Yeah, that's and, and I see money, this right? shit all the time. And people don't even realize, you see, the people pay to see the baby face win, but he keeps getting fucked every week. Yeah. And you come back with a match the next week, well, they, I'm going back because they can't do that to him this week, and yeah. then they fuck us another way. And you, you gotta get the room, yeah. Yes. To and the you point where you almost start to lose faith. Yes. Like it's never gonna happen, and then it's that, holy yeah. shit, it's gonna happen. And you know, I, I like that, Steve, because it, it it reminds me, and, and don't get me wrong, I don't have the answers to everything, but you got like your impact wrestling. You got, you know, and WWE is a whole different ball game. Don't even go there. Don't even fuck with them, brother. They're, <laughs> they got, they're there. Mm -hmm. They're the, apparently me, the, the king. The Coca Cola. But yeah. they're it. Yeah. But when you got a, something like impact wrestling, and don't make it wrong, I watch sometimes just to see, and you, sometimes it really just pisses you off because you, you you see little things that could do good but see what they fail to do there that is a light in order to especially when you got a smaller wrestling organization like them and people watch it every week is to bring in that heel mm -hmm. i mean that heel that can carry that load and then you bring in that baby face that can carry that load this is what they don't do no more and I don't give a shit who you are. I don't care what you've done. These are your two money people that you gotta, that heel's gotta beat every single baby face in that territory. Right. He's gotta beat him. And the people don't realize it doesn't yes. hurt the baby face. No, yeah, you and know? the guys won't put him over. I don't know yeah. what's going on. Oh. Okay, and that heel goes to the top of that pyramid. Meanwhile, uh, this baby face has got to beat every heel. Yeah. Look here, and it, it's a business. Look here, till they meet, at, and when they meet at the top, that's when you do fucking business. And then everybody meets. Yes, yeah. everybody does. Yeah. It pays off for everybody. Say something you don't. I mean, I watched TV the other day. You know, and, I, and, and don't get me wrong, I watched a match the other day on it. They had a kid, and I don't know him. Not knocking him. He just don't know. He had a red mask on or something. And Jeff Hardy is his partner. And what they don't understand is about telling a story in our business. See, right off the bat, you know, before I, I do an arm drag, I work the guy's arm for a little while. Right. You understand me? Just that. And I'm watching this, and, and it's hit me. I, right as soon as I locked up, I said, this fucker just is working for a hot spot. Yeah. And he went through, and it was so bad. And then all of a sudden he does two high spots, and both of the heels are out on the floor. And of all people, he runs over and just tags Jeff Hardy. Now, do you think it's the lack of time that they have on TV now? That they can't they can't tell the story that they, it's basically, I gotta get my shit in real quick on TV, or? No, it's a lack of, of knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge? Yeah. yeah. They don't know. You know, and, and I don't want a job with them. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, but, but I'd wish they would pay me some money to come in and tell them guys I'll be there at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, I can't make them superstars, but Jesus, I can make them understand how to tell a story in a match. And don't give a shit who you are or what yeah. you are. And keep people from changing that child? Watch. I mean... And go back, and I like this, too. And I'm not saying it's because Rob, it's all of them. Go back and, and and watch some old tapes of NWA. And you're, and, you're, and you're watching the match, but don't watch the match and get the people. Yes. They are absolutely going ape shit. Yeah. Okay? At the right times, too. And people are screaming, ba-ba, da-da-da-da. That's before you filtered. Mm-hmm. 
the sound in. <laughs> and you go and watch TV, do you see these guys doing these high spots and they got the people, you think they're going crazy, look at the people at ringside. Did you hear? Yeah. But you hear the sound? Yeah. yeah. And you know it's- They don't even shit. give a shit. Yeah. Because they, the guys don't have the knowledge of knowing how to get their attention for their match. Yeah. I love to help them. I was itching. Robert, what do you got? What do you got on me? Are you allergic to me, sweetie? That's 30 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> 30 year itch. Now, another thing about tag team right here, you know, but you oh, gotta understand, great. Robert and I have been tag team partners for 30 years. And I understand that uh, we are wrestling partners, but I've been with him more than I've been with my wife. Mm -hmm. You understand me? <clears throat> We've been on the road many a times, many things. See, that's one thing you have to understand about being a tag team wrestler, too, is how, how to live like that. You know, it's a hard, it's, that's hard, too, buddy. Yeah, because you, you guys got to, like, you got to find the happy medium, too, because well, you know, different dude, people, grew up well, in different areas, you know, hard. and then you got to work together every night, and you're I mean, basically I, I'm serious. driving and living. In real life, we are like an old married couple. Right. I ain't lying. <laughs> I'm about getting to fight like hell, argue like hell, but not nothing like that. Yeah. But we drew money together, and I, and I, and we, and we sat in here, and I, and you understand this, Robert, and I, I hate you, but, oh, buddy, uh, if I had to do over again anything and never change, Robert and I, to me, in my heart, was the greatest, I think, our chemistry, yeah, our friendship, our love for each other. Uh, it's something that you can never replace. Big part of my life. Same with here. And I'll pay you the $20 so I can get out of here. Yeah. Putting you, no, but it is. I mean, they didn't, no, people don't understand. Yeah. It's not even about the ring. I mean, they don't understand that. Like you said earlier about us traveling these 400 miles, but you don't understand the in betweens that. Yeah. And then when you get past that part, you got another in between. That you got to deal with. Yeah. They still don't understand. It's a, it's a tough life. Yeah. No, nobody understands. No. Now, going back to '86, uh, you guys start. Now you're world t tag champs again. Uh, you start the feud with Oli and Arn. Yes. Now, is is Oli as miserable of a person as like he? You know, you you know the few times I've met him, he's miserable. His book is is amazing, but it's miserable. Like no one's good. Ah, oh, hell with that guy. But like, how is it working with him? You know, because I, I would watch you would just you know sell your ass off for Oli, and then to hear that like Oli was kind of a bully and stuff like that. How, how was it you know dealing well, with? You know, you talk you about Oli, Oli this. Oli signed me one of his books one time. He goes, Robert, you were you, you were great. No, you were good, but I was great. <laughs> right. Yeah. He was his favorite wrestler. Well, you know what? You might have heard this before, and I repeat the same thing. Uh, you know, Oli was one of them big guy syndrome things. He liked the big guys. And they brought, you know, and see, we already been there. We already did the the deal with the, the Russians and the Midnight Express. And I'm fixing to go into the, the deal with Flair. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. But, sure, I'm going and there. then, here we go. They bring the four horsemen in. That's when they bring Oli. And Oli's uh, up front, say what he wants to, and don't give a fuck if he's in church and do it. How you guys, how you draw these little guys? How you do this right here? Bye, bye, bye. Da, da, da. I don't you know. So we shoot an angle with them, dude, and we sell out. Yeah. He don't know how to do this. And, and, and it just did the thing. And see, in this business, it's about how tough you are. It's if you know in your head. We hit the ring. And I, never, I believe this is in Hampton, Virginia. People are going ape shit. Robert Arn's over here. Da 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 da. I got Oli in the corner, and I done hit him 873 fucking times. <laughs> He's got to hold the top rope wrecking his head. Yeah. All right, I just stopped. Then just stopped and I just looked at him. And I looked and Robert and everybody, I just walked to the middle of the ring and I took a big old fucking butt. <laughs> Bam! 
I hear R. Anderson go, what the fuck, Robert over there, because <laughs> Robert knew what I did. Only walks up to me and said, what the fuck are you doing? I said, well, goddamn, you wouldn't go down. I thought I would. <laughs> and he looked at me and he says, I don't know whether to whoop your ass or shake your hand. He said, you got more balls than a Brahma bull. And after I did that, Ole worked with us, but he like he worked with uh, yeah, I mean, he didn't even take a slam off the top rope. Yeah. And he never even went to a knee. But he didn't, he, Robert. And we saw, so, that's who we did the Rock and Roll Super Summer Scissors Tour. Yeah. And that's what we did. We broke all these records and with all of them. It was, it was great. Now, in, in this time, too, the Great American Bash series is going on. You guys shoot the angle with flair. Flair rubs your, your, your face yes. and stuff like that, which leads to some singles matches. I want to say at the Bash 86, you had yours in Fayetteville. Fayetteville, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Yes. My parents live in Fayetteville, so yeah, I got that one. And then I had Brew Warrior Hawk and Feli. Yeah. Uh, like, I was there. Like, it was my book. But, um, with the, with they, he digs your face into the thing. Did you sand, sandpaper the face? That was Greensboro. Greensboro? No, my bad. Okay. Yeah, I'm from the old school. I don't have to sandpaper it. I know how it's done. Yeah? Yeah, I know how it's done. That's, uh, what is it? Uh, new skin, cigarette ashes. Oh, Jesus. Oh, so I, I had heard the, I had read the one story like, uh, I guess he had done it the steamboat in the late 70s. And the, the guys would like, Wahoo would sandpaper. Yeah, just to see, get they, that. Did, did, did you look at mine? And they, mine was. And then you had the broken nose, too. The iodine and the cigarette ashes. Yeah. And then you put new skin over the top of it. And it looked like a big scab. Wow. And, and then the broken nose. The, yeah, uh, the broken nose gimmick. Man. And uh, then when Flair went into the thing. You know, you read Flair's book. Yeah, yeah. You know, we went 17 nights straight row hour Broadway's. Now, at the time, was Dusty testing out to see if you guys could be singles, or was it always just the plan of, okay, let's, you know, these guys have done so much as a tag team. I think we were so hot. Like, was trying to cool us off. No, well, well, that's no, what I was, that was my well, other thing. Was he going to try and cool you off? By he ain't trying to cool us off. He's trying to break, he's trying to kill us off. And then I look at it, buddy, what, my first rodeo. Yeah. That's where all the heat started. You understand me? I remember, uh, and we didn't say this earlier, and I love you, Dusty, but, you know, Rob and I were, were the first ones. See, they, that right down here, this Coliseum, it's right down the road here. Yeah. Before that, before we come in here, they worked over at the Park Center, and they moved into the thing. What did they say they had us against the Midnight Express on a Sunday afternoon? It's our first time to, to go into there. But they had the big boys in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Everybody you can imagine. It was Robert and I against the Midnight Express. The semi main event, I think, was Italian Stallion Joel against, Joel against Joel. I mean, wow. you can't believe this card. It sold completely out. Okay. Charlotte did. Charlotte. First time the building ever sold out for wrestling. Wow. With a not a not a strong undercard. No. Yeah. But we was at a good angle with them in the yeah. Express. I mean Flair they're all in Baltimore. But they, they didn't draw shit. Now here we are, we, we broke the hundred thousand dollar mark on the on the attendance and mm -hmm. all this stuff. And I knew something was wrong there is when Dusty called us in the office and told us This is two, uh, two things you don't do in this business. We said, what's that, Dusty? Tell him. He said, you do not sell out the Charlotte Coliseum when I ain't on the card. What? That's no shit. That's when you started to try to split us. Now, did you know, like, afterwards, like, fuck. Great. Well, I knew uh, it was getting to a point. And, and I went one of these guys was in a rough shot. And, and I'm not going to, and I want you to listen to this, Steve. And this is, they flew us all the way up to New York. We was on the thing, we went on a private plane. It was an incident that happened that worked up to this. You know, they fired us. Dusty did. Oh, and they left us stranded. Is this the eight, it, they fire you in 87? Or is this, this, is this is after uh, Tully and Arn, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, they after fired you us. The and, but we're on a private plane. 
you know, back then you didn't have credit cards. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, Plus, you expected you were going home. Yeah, they fired us. Yeah. Told us to get out. Now, let me tell you, what was the what led up to this? Was there an argument or? <laughs> ah. They were supposed to do a thing that cut my hair yeah. on TV, and it was a coup. But I did something, did some, just some, really trying to kill us off. Who was going to cut your hair? Tully and Arn? No, the uh, Bushwhackers. Bushwhackers. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. They, they, they was just in, coming yeah. in, you, you yeah. team. But they did something, and I fucking refused to do it to go fuck yourself. So. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. They said, all right, we went, we went to the ring with the two guys, and they, we got to put them over. I said, no, I'll put them over my way. I put them over in like 30 seconds. After he did the finish, I jumped up and did the strut across the ring. <coughs> Do you remember who the guys you put over? Oh, yeah, it's Barbarian and Warlord. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they fired us. But I was letting them know, too, I ain't taking your shit. Right. And uh, they fired us. They did that. Three months later, this fucking territory was in trouble, son. Right. By this time, they've brought in the Fantastics, right? Okay. Well, they do. They did all kinds of things. Yeah. But so they tried to bring in the Fantastics from mid south that we left, and didn't work. His territory it, faded away. Well, see, yeah. it, but now we're now overshadowing Dusty. And I'm just telling you. The yeah. Truth. No, I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, this. I never knew the, the this, story that you guys this said you got fired. Is the most backstabbing politic thing you ever met in your life. Yeah. Because we was in a position to, and I'm serious about it, we were over in this son of a bitch. I mean, when they fired us, well, there's ads in the paper lost and found. Force the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, they, I think they boycotted well, the they, 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 Well, you guys, like, basically, like, disappeared. You yes. Because yeah. there was no, like, exp explanation. Yes, they, did a lot, they boycotted a lot of the shows. And I'm telling you, the bottom fell completely out. Yeah. I got I got the article in the Charlotte paper back then where it said it said they were talking to Crockett and asked him where, where rock and roll was, and Crockett said we're negotiating on a new, new deal. New deal. Yeah. And about a couple weeks later, that same editor come back and said, "People, don't let them fool you. Rock and roll has gone." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And these are the, these are still the days of like kayfabe too. So oh, it's yes. like yeah. And and, and and I ain't saying it was just being Robert. But it was the bad decisions that were made in the office, and a bad decision to get me and real, real me and Robert. Yeah, so it was kind of a build-up. If you that know. didn't happen, the Crockett territory would still be here today. I, I don't know if it would or not because of the TV and the syndicate things and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it would have lasted a lot damn longer than it did. Now, uh, when you, when you guys come back, um, it sucked. Well, yeah. I, why don't we get into this uh, in a second now? Um, like between this time though, you guys did the Starcade match '86 with uh, Arn and Oli, yes. where you know you guys come from behind, you win the cage, but you guys are you know beat to shit. You know, so the next week on TV, you guys do the t the the switch with Rude and Fernandez. Yes, I was like I remember being a kid, being like that was strange because Rude and Fernandez wasn't they weren't like a, an established team yet, I but like it was, it was so believable to. because. You guys were so hurt from the 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 cage match. Yes. Now, when they switched the belts back, now I was a Phantom title change, right? Mm -hmm. Rude had already left for New York. Was that like common business? Because they played a match of you guys beating Fernandez and Rude. Listen to me. But it, it, was it a, like me. a house Don't show? See, Rick left to go to WWE. Yeah. We never did beat them back for the world titles. They showed a match of us winning the match. Yeah. 
but that wasn't the Rick, you know, and, and if you notice, they had new belts. Yes, yes. Rick, Rick took off of that yeah. belt. I think Rick's buried with that belt. Really? Yes, I wow. believe he is. That yeah, because that was the, the 25th anniversary. Yeah, the they were black, gorgeous. Yes. The silver and the that gold. That was so gold ones, they just redone them. Really? Oh, yes. they were gorgeous. And heavy. Were they heavy? Oh, yeah, the heaviest belts in the world. Oh. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Was you, that commonplace you, to do, like, a like okay, a house show, like, non-title match, just in case somebody, like, took off? They, they could, they you could know, I that. think it was just lucky as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think they just had it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, see, that was, you know, it was another thing in Polly. And, and you see... I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of you or not, but that's when uh, they... Uh, this is May 87. That's when they brought us back. That's when Robert got hurt. I got hurt, Nanny. I blew my knee out, Nanny. Well, but it was still in WCW. No, it was in Smoky Mountain. No, it was in W... It was yeah, that, Ron and... Yeah, that was when that's when Holy took the book over and brought us back in. Right. You guys, was, said, we done been gone and come back yeah, in. Again. Left in '87, came back in '88, yeah, which was we, like a cool thing. You guys we, weren't there long though in '88 either, right? You came in for the bashes. Yeah, it's another one. Those, bashes and we left again. Yeah, it's one of those things where. Now, do you think they missed the boat on a on a, a, a Rock and Roll Express Fantastics feud in in Crockett? I don't think it was true. You don't think? It, no, you, I don't. You don't think, think that that no, being heels, really. you know? Not really. You don't think it's, so? You know, hmm. uh, no. Because uh, we, we did that somewhere before and it didn't work. And I forgot, what was that, Robert? That was the fantastic. Is that Smoky Mountain? I don't know. We worked with them and it didn't. It didn't draw It didn't work. Oh. Yeah, and see, I, was, I, was, I always thought, like, um. You yeah. know what? See, our way of drawing money, Steve, and I ain't trying, was with us working. With the bigger heels, yeah, and telling a good month story before you done it. Mm -hmm. I know that where you're coming from, like the part about the jealousy standpoint of view that would be in in the angle with the fantastics against us. But we tried it somewhere, and I, and I can't, dude. I, I don't know. It didn't work. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work, and especially when you. And don't get me wrong, Bobby and Tommy were great babyface workers, but you got to be that special someone to be that good heel. Yeah. Yeah, that. that's true. You, you understand you, me? In the lead, right? You have to be that big special someone to make that transition. And, don't, and I'm not knocking them. No, no, no. No, yeah. no it makes sense now that you say it. just it. didn't work. So I, I remember, oh, that would have been such a great view. Yes. But now that you say it, it, it makes sense. Yes. So what, what leads to you guys leaving in, in 88? Is it... I, I think I read low pay, right? Was it? Yes. You didn't like the payoffs? Oh yeah, they come back and tried. You know, we done smartened up to what was going on, and and then it was really shit. So I remember Robert he left, and uh, I wrestled Ivan, I think, in uh, somewhere in a Russian chain match, and I walked in the dressing room, told everybody bye, I said I won't be back. Yeah, because you stayed for Ricky stayed for a little. Now, how is that? How does that conversation go? Because. Do you just abruptly leave Robert? You say that's it, or is it something you and Ricky talk about and say, hey, "Look, I, I just exactly can't." It was something that went on, but I, I know that we, when I did come back again, that's when Robert hurt his leg, and that's when he made me the York Foundation. Right, right. And uh, they got over like a, you know, that would have got over good. Me and Terry Taylor were actually good eels, but but they wouldn't give us a push. You know no, saying? yeah, you guys were. They wouldn't. They wouldn't turn us loose. And right around that time, when you guys left in at, back in '88, you went to. I, I remember this. It, it, uh, the magazine. You went back to Memphis, but as yeah. a heel. Yeah, well, which I well, thought was um, you grew the beard. Yes. Uh, like yes. Was that something you guys always did? You guys ever want to be heels, or were you guys just enjoying? It was the, whatever was paying the bills, right? Paying the bills, buddy. I, no, I went back and did a little thing with uh, Lawler. Yeah. And you know, had a little run. I made a little, had a little fun. Yeah. Because I, uh, I don't know. Was it different after all these years of being baby faces, like trying well, trying to be a heel? Before, Robert yeah. And I were, you know, see what you don't understand is when Robert and I were the World Tag Team Champions. Now, like we go to Kansas City and work like with you know, the Goggles, or we go yeah. up to 
AWA, I mean, uh, wherever we went. Well, we were heels. Yeah. Well, we go in and work with our yeah, top, yeah, damn, top baby. Work with oh, top they work with the top, work with the top we baby, with the top face, baby yeah. face tag team. You yeah. know, and you can't go out there and go, and we went our Broadways. Yeah. But Robert, we're healed. Right. You understand me? Because they were chasing the belts, right? Yeah, people yeah. you think you do our Broadways. Yeah, you go about Broadways. No, yeah. That was just a I've done two my entire it. life, and I, I had to sleep afterwards for like two days. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> But, um, hey, that's Vince calling. Tell about yeah, we're all three of us will be there. Two. We're done. We're busy right now. Call back later. Um, so you guys come back in WCW in in 1990. Now Oli, like you were just saying, Oli was booking. Like how how do you guys come back in? We come back in. That's where I blew my knee out. Right, and that's, that's where Ricky uh, goes. That's where he goes. Huh? And then that's when Ricky Let me turns tell the heel. Story goes, on that? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> ACL terror. Or? Yeah, ACL. Oh. Now you, you were out for a while, right? Uh, and then they tried to do the short little feud with you guys. I was out, I was out a year. That's yeah, when they turned me as the York Foundation. Right. And then when Robert come back, that's they when I did a York Foundation, I wrestled him on a pay-per-view. Yeah. Now, how, how was Strange? Is that something you guys had talked about before? Like, oh, I wonder if we can make money together against uh, each no. other. No. I told him I had a job. Was, you just knew it was you know, something you had to do? Uh, yeah, I was put in a situation. I remember in Knoxville, they brought Robert back, and that's when I slapped him. And, yeah, you know, and before that, though, before, before I came back, Ricky called me and said they're going to turn him heel. I said, Ricky, I'm starting. I've been ready to start back in two weeks. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't don't, have a job. Yeah, don't, that's what I'm saying. They, they didn't want us back together. Yes. We would have drew, I... drew more money to be coming back as a tag team. Well, yeah. it, but, but, but they weren't going to give us that position. So, I knew that was not going to give us that position back. And by that, by that time, it's now corporate, right? So it's, it's, it's a whole dude, different that's, world. That's when Eric Bischoff and all them dick lickers come in and kill the son of a bitch. Now, in, in, before this time and stuff like that, uh, I've always wanted that. I, have to, I don't know why I've never asked Cornette this. Ada Bergania creates the Midnight Rockers with Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Now, when you guys first hear about that, what's your like initial response? Like, here, here's a team that's uh, you know absolutely cut from not just us, but from Midnight. you know, but yeah, the Midnights too. Like, I took it as a compliment. Right. I, I was wondering if that it's is it's like, oh well, there's yeah, two young guys yeah. making. We didn't give it. I mean, we, we, we you know, was in some show with Mark, and Sean was there, and. Uh, Maybe Kansas City? Like he did a lot well, of Well, I don't know where they were. God, he run and hid. And he peeked it out. I said, man, what the fuck? Robert told him, what the fuck wrong with you? Get your ass out of here. Right. It's a business. He said, well, right? Vernon and them, we don't Talk give a shit. I ain't mad at us. I ain't mad at you. Go here and have a seat. Yeah, yeah. man, have fun. Jeez, it's a great compliment. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, what you just did, was it rock and roll RPMs? Or a bunch, bunch of them. Yeah, bunch of and that's got to make you you feel good, like that you know, especially like, you know, Road Warriors had their you know, the Blade Runners, they had you know, Demolition and stuff like that. And with the Rock and Roll Express, now you come out and you know, now you got the Midnight Rockers, the Rock and Roll RPMs. It's like you guys are like, do you sit there and think like, wow, I created this, and then people are so in, in, enthralled in what we've done that they want to try and create a version yeah. of it. it well, it's, it's a cool business, compliment. But yes, uh, it is. I took it as a compliment. Oh. You know, I watched. Uh, you know, I watched Sean grow up in his business. You know, he was, since he was a kid. You know, and it, you know, and everybody's looking for that break. And if it would have helped him, then what you made it. You know, it was a great stepping stone for yeah. him. Yeah, and I'm glad. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it's something he remembers too. You know, okay. now, after uh, after you guys leave WCW again, you know, um, uh, it's it's a lot of. Independent work now. You're doing a lot of singles. You're doing a lot of singles, and eventually coming the tag team. Then uh, Cornette creates Smoky Mountain. Mountain. Now, did, when you went there, did it feel like the territory days again? Well, see, Robert. Robert went back in before I. I was still with WCW. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, that's when I left. Uh, I did a rush to chain match, and that's when I left and I came in. They shot at Robert. Shot angle with uh, Robert Fuller, and Jimmy Golden, mm -hmm. Stud by stable. himself. Did it, buddy? I, it, I, if I talk about Louisiana, I had to, but then we get to the topic of Smoky Mountain. My God, it was so unbelievable to be a part of that. 
It was great. Yeah. I mean, my, it was, we drew money there. Right. Really, yeah. It was. It, it, it was it an was older a, territory in the in the nineties. It, 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 it yeah. was just around East Tennessee. And yeah. Like at Virginia and West Virginia. You know the sh the it wasn't a big area. It wasn't the big cities. It was you know he, he knew where to hit. God, we did good business there. Yeah. We sure did. I'm not. I mean, people don't realize how good that was. And, and then you guys clicked right away with. The, the, the heavenly bodies, the, you know, Dr. Tom. First, it was Dr. Tom and Stan. Right? Yes. The thing about our, our, our style, we was able to work with everybody. Right. Well, yes. that's that's what I'm getting at now. Is because then it was it was Dr. Tom and Jimmy Del Rey, and then, uh, you know, then it was you guys and the gangsters. You know, like, oh, yeah. and it, and you know, to know New Jack now, you know, all yeah. these years later, and how insane he is. You know, you guy. The one thing, like he can be crazy, New Jack, and scream and yell and stuff like that. But he ends every speech. You want to know how to work? You watch the Rock and Roll Express. You yeah. know, those guys took me and taught me right. how to work because yeah. I didn't know shit until. He, he just uh, reminded, it's not my good New Jack. Uh, he, he just I just reminded shit. us about that jersey. Yeah, yeah. He, sure did. He, he will do that every locker room I'm in. Yeah. He will give a speech to the locker room, talk about how. They don't know anything that, you know, you guys you have to learn how to sell. You baby faces don't sell. You guys don't do this. You want to learn how to work. You were, you learn from the Rock and Roll Express. And, uh, yeah, and he always says, you know, you guys took him and Mustafa, you know, and, and taught them how to be heels. Yes, we did. How to get heat, was, how to let you sell. And, uh, right. it's, it's <laughs> they were kind of, kind of hard to handle. I mean, right. don't get yeah. me wrong, because you know, <laughs> young guys coming in out of Atlanta, and boy, we here we doing this thing, and all of a sudden the match, the new Jack, I just turned bipolar about something, and I went, like, what the fuck is wrong? He said, this guy over here called the N-word. Yeah. I said, dude, we down south. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're looking, I mean, goddamn, the, you're a heel, and it took me a long time to make him understand yeah. that. You know, and I mean, you, you know he's got that he's got that oh, temper yeah, see, and stuff and, like that. And, and, and in this in this modern day a word world, you know. If anybody even says that word, it's their ignorance. Yes. Anyway, but then you go back to this years ago, and and, and you still had your white schools. You had uh, blacks, and, and it's, well, it wasn't that uncommon for. I mean, if you're out there, especially you know they did the angle where they Rodney King me. Yeah. <laughs> you see how they Rodney King me. Yeah. They reversed the thing, and Robert and. And it was a racial angle. Yes, you know, which... it was, dude. And look here, they come out there eating watermelon and fried chicken and all this stuff right here. And and one person says the N word and they turn the bipolar. It took I remember, a long I remember time. one of the first nights we, we met New Jack and it was an outdoor show. And I'm out back and New Jack comes out from another door and he's kicking a wall. I thought, I don't even know this guy, but I'm fixing to wrestle him. Yeah. You're thinking, what I said, what's up, buddy? Well, I remember I told you, I was in the dressing room and some guy came up and pinched him on the ass like he knew him. And dude, Jack, dude, Jack, Jack beat that yeah. and yeah. fuck out of him. I'm sitting right there going, break it up. I said, fuck, I ain't. So, so I'm out back and dude, Jack come out and he told me he beat that guy up. I said, what? He said, he grabbed me on the ass. I said, don't worry about it. We're fixing to go wrestle. So we soon we get in the ring to wrestle, he's still... Robert loves yeah, him with it. I walk up with him, I said, headlock me. He headlock me, I grabbed him on the ass. <laughs> and then he just went, he went just like this right here. I said, yeah. And then we had a great match. Yeah. I loosened him up, Robert loosened him up, got yeah. to laughing like hell. I said, I grabbed a handful of ass. Yeah, I said, but this is the boys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, and you know, it, it's one of those things, like, I don't... Th you Think about it, like, New Jack would have never became what he became in ECW and still to this day, if it wasn't for what he learned from a, in Smoky Mountain. It happened. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, know, I, I, I wouldn't say that. He hasn't forgotten. He wouldn't no, that's the no, thing he I'll never forget. forget. I love you, Jack. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, I, I absolutely adore, I adore him. You don't, you got to understand in this business, you got to, in, in real life, you have a lot of different personalities. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New Jack's one of them up at the top, son. <laughs> but uh, with New Jack, now, now, You've worked with Dr. Tom and, and you know, Stanley, guys that you've worked with before and stuff like that. The gangsters come in the Smoky Mountain. Now you're the teachers. 
How hard is that to, you know, you're so used to working with established teams, you know, Tully and R and Oli and R and Midnight Express, you know, uh, Doc and, and DiBiase, Heavenly it's, Bodies. It's, I know what you now, say. now you've become the teacher. We well, actually we become teachers way back in Mid South. Yeah. Dr. Death, when he first started. He, he oh, that's Raves Green. Rick Rude could oh, rest, so we yeah. taught him a lot. He was like somebody on roller skates. Yeah. Then you got Nikita. Yeah. Nikita was green. So we had teach these guys all along. Right. And did, did you like that? Was that like a, a, a fun aspect of the the business too? Is like, look at look at what we can help create these guys, you know, especially, you know, you're, you're talking about monsters that you were making I, too. I, I, think it, I think the main reason that we help somebody and teach them a lot is because the love for the business. Yeah. Um, you know, you can tell that somebody that it's a love for wants this business so much. And you try to help them and everything. But, but, but you know, we still do that today. Yeah. New Jack Mustafa had a great gimmick. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't the part about that, it's about the part of making love. We making our love to draw money. Huh? You know, they was there. And it yeah. was it was it was working. And then another thing, you know, New Jack wasn't a cocky or Mustafa either. They wanted to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So and they, they had that they openness that. that they wanted to, you know. Yeah, you know, but they, when they was in Smoky Mountain, you know, they were going to school. Yeah. And, you know, that's what that was set up for them to go on, and it worked. Steve, we're going back to what we were saying earlier is, you know, they can have these, but they don't tell good stories to come back with. Right. And I, I think a lot of today's TV guys, you know, the independent guys that are doing the TV, do it like they think like Vince. Like give everything away on TV instead of and using the, the television as a marketing. That's what T. That's what T and A are doing. They fucking up. It, it don't work. Vince, you know, I told somebody before. I, I said if they would quit trying to compete, compete with Vince, you're yes, not yeah. gonna fucking win. He's Coca Cola, but there's room for Pepsi and yeah, RC. They're and not that. gonna win. Leave him the fuck alone. Yeah. It, it, the more you try to, it's making your show worse. Yeah. Have your own show. Create your own characters. Feel them right. Get you some guys, good workers. And there's some on there I've seen. And bless their hearts, I love them all. But goddamn, you got to go. I mean, you got to leave. I mean, yeah. we got to. Do you believe guys know, are there too long sometimes? Fucking yeah. hey, man. Just, they've been there since the start of yeah. it. Yeah, I agree. You, you got to get them out. You, you got to go. Yeah, but, freshen but, them up. You're going back to Smoky Mountain Wrestling, and, and you you got to give a lot of credit sometimes to a lot of people that it's not only us, uh, you know, especially when we was having a big run there at, in Charlotte, you know, when Dennis Condry just left. Yes. And the Bears Bobby Eaton. No, did he just leave? That's always something like Cornette la laughs and Bobby laughs. Oh, yeah, just one day he just decided to Dude, he come disappeared anymore. overnight. How, did, <laughs> how did they come up with Stan Lane? Like, uh, well, they, shit, he's close? Or... <laughs> so he was there in the territory, and, and let me just tell you something, dude. And I got two people I want to say this about. Because Stanley Lane was the one that stepped in with Dennis's buddy, and not only I, I guess it's the charisma, oh or my goodness, the way he looks or the bum bum, but we didn't miss a beat. Oh, my hat was off the stand, Lane. I said, really, he, he was stepped into a place, and nobody. Even you, Dennis, was gone. And that's the and he wasn't like a Dennis clone too. He was something yes. different, flashy. And they never knew he was yeah, gone. He was a whole new. And see now, the same thing happened in Smoky Mountain wrestling. Uh, you had uh, Tom Pritchard. That's right. And Stan Lane. And Stan Lane's leaving. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I was sitting in a town in Kentucky. And here comes this O.P. Taylor, redheaded guy walking in. Jimmy Ain't back got back. no tooth in the front. And. The, Jimmy Cornette will say he's gonna take Stan Lane's place. I'm gonna you fucking nuts. This fucking guy's gonna take Stan Lane's blah, blah. Oh yes, we go to the ring and see it's something about this business that you know. Mm -hmm. We have the thing Tom started and I locked up with Jimmy Del Rey. Right when I locked up with him, I said, God damn. You knew. We knew, buddy. Yeah. He took his and I, and, I, and I told him this. I told Jimmy Del Rey. I said, man, I'm going to tell you the truth. I mean, I looked at your Opie Taylor looking ass. You got one, I got a tooth knocked out. And you're going to take the place of a, of, an, you know, and he, I got a man thing for Stan Lane. But, you know, it's yeah. not bad. But he's a good looking man. Yeah. yeah totally. I mean, boy, that body, ba 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 ba. And, dude, you took his place overnight. Yeah. 
Without my hat's you. off to you, Jimmy Dale Reyes. I didn't think you knew it. Yeah. That son of a bitch was a hell of a worker. Yeah. Good God, he was. So old Jimmy Cornette made a great decision that blew my mind. That really put my foot in my mouth about. Now, my last question. How do you guys want to be remembered? Always putting the fans number one. Well, I don't want to be remembered. We out there and did the best we could. I want to be uh individual thing yeah and a tag team thing uh individual i want to be uh known as the best settler ever in this business you hear me yeah i will be known as that and i want to be known because there's a lot of them out there i hope me and robert will be known as one of the top five tag teams ever in the business of professional wrestling I think it's about. You know, I, I, and I, I like before I retire. Probably never happen. Uh, I think we deserve it. I think Vince ought to put us in. That's, that was going to say, you know, it, do you think there's going to be time? Or no, no. It's got, you, I you think never it's got to, you know, yeah. eventually. I don't know, but, but see, I don't want him to do it so late that it don't mean nothing to me no more. Yeah. You understand me? I totally understand that, yeah. I like to have it to enjoy it. Yep. And to make it real good. Uh, I loved everything. I, you know, I, if I had to do over my life, I wouldn't do nothing because I wouldn't have a set of children. Yeah. Fixing to be next month, I have four grandsons. Wow. Congratulations. Have you kids yet? I got two. Congratulations. Boy and girl. They look just like me. I'm going to be a father in four weeks. Congratulations. Yeah, my son's 17, working, you know. You're a grandfather. Uh, no, oh. no, come on. Um, not yet, soon. But well, my son's 17, he's working, you know, under the mask. Can't wait for him to get in the ring with your boy. Well, you know. And then I'm going to have a baby soon. Like, huh. Come here, buddy. I want to introduce him. I mean, and you, and I want you, you're sitting here, and if it's bad or bad, you, come here, sit down. You had your first taste, of not knowing who my boy was, yeah. in Nashville. You got to see him. In the ring, I want you to tell the world out here. Yeah, the like it, it, you said it best earlier in the thing of like when you get it, you know, it's like natural and stuff like that. I watched him roll around in the ring at a show in, in Nashville. I'm like, oh, look at this kid. And it reminded, I told you, I, it reminded me so much. Are you wearing a Braves hat? Yes. Oh, I can't put you over now. Oh. Um, <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> Everything is good I'm about to say about you, I'm about to throw away. Um, yeah, it's it, like my son, when he gets in the ring, it's like it's so natural and so cool. Like, you know, you can't just throw anybody in there. And the, this kid right here is so respectful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel like that. I'm like looking for my father over my yeah. shoulder. I'm like, wait, you don't have to say that to me. But it, it's it's something that, like, you know, it's instilled in him. It's it's almost like, uh, you know, you're born with it. And can't wait for well, you it's to so funny that I hope you draw a lot of money with me. With well, you know, it's, it's like I try to teach him. You know, nowadays, too, it's not only him, but the, the kids at the independent shows is, to make them understand how to make good decisions. Yeah. Lord, look at me. I'm a living proof, buddy, of what a bad decision sometimes in life can do. But I have my son, if I, and I try to tell him to to keep his mind focused and stay away from the stuff. Yeah. Because one bad decision can ruin yeah. your whole life. It's that why in the road. Like, do you do of, good or do you try bad that one know, time? Because I'm, it... I'm hoping that he, mm -hmm. one day that he'll be a big WWE superstar. You don't want him yeah. because it's his dream. Yeah. His dream in life. Make money and, and I want him, And I want him to fulfill that. Yeah. All right, bud. All right? Yeah. Can give him the hat, too. Ah! Sure. Yes, yeah, so he wants your hat. He, <laughs> all right, all right. he wants to wear it. Go sit oh, down. Yeah. Yeah. Make me cry if you say you like Tipper Joe. But, you know, again, it's great, and we talked about a lot of things. You know, Steve, I remember when you was a kid, you remember, I remember, I, yeah, yeah. I I the, in lock, well, yeah, I remember that in, in a lot of them, we watched a lot of these guys that are superstars as they grow up in this business. There you are, Steve. And it's something that nobody can take <laughs> away no. from us. And, you, and, and like you, you, and you know, it's only few guys in this business that would consider the boys. You're one of them. Oh, thank you. And that's... Uh, a lot of them try to be, but we know they're not, and they right. will be. And to the fans out there, y'all just keep rocking.
Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys Thank so you much, too. man. It was it was All an right. absolute pleasure to have well, the, the Rock and Roll Express there. As soon as the camera goes off, Robert, we're going to put the boots to this You're Right. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. This was uh, Old School with Rock and Roll Express.